100 years of Oregon State football. The past evokes emotion. Fable head coach Tommy Prothrow. Heisman Trophy winner Terry Baker. And the great pumpkin D. Andros. The Beavers start the next 100 years with Jerry Pettibone at the helm. A proven recruiter and a disciple of the option game. Pettibone exemplifies the best of Oregon State tradition as Beaver football moves onward into the future. The University of Wyoming sits on the high plains between the Laramie and Snowy Mountain ranges. At 7,200 feet above sea level, Wyoming boasts of being the highest university in the nation. The fans at War Memorial will be sky high today as their Cowboys try to stampede the Beavers. 14 starters return for head coach Joe Tiller. That experience blended with the optimism behind senior quarterback Joe Hughes suggests the Cowboys can rebound from their 5-7 and seven mark from a year ago. The Beavers will try to bulldog the Cowboys next on Prime Sports Northwest. It's a beautiful day in the Rockies, and here in Laramie, Wyoming, two teams turn the corner on the century of football. The Oregon State Beavers meet the University of Wyoming Cowboys. Two programs that are similar in a way. Each has a coach heading into his third year, and each has a program to be turned around. Hello everyone, I'm Jimmy Jones, along with Steve Priest. And you know, if you listen to the Beaver followers and those close to the program, that turn around the corner is very near. Oh, I think so, Jimmy. Uh, Jerry Pettibone took over a program that hadn't won more football games than they'd lost for 22 years. He not only took over a program that was in dire straits that way, but they play in the Pac-10. Last year, they had eight out of 11 competitors in bowls. They had to recruit against the Pac-10. And he took over a pass offense, so he had to change everything. Three years into the system, he has bigger size, better speed, he has Pac-10 looking players, and his systems are in. This is a far better team than Oregon State saw a year ago, or put on the field a year ago against Kansas. And they've got a quarterback they're very comfortable with. It was the priority in spring to come up with the number one quarterback, and they've done it. Well, Ian Shields is the quarterback, not just because of his throwing ability. He is a leader. He makes very few mistakes. Whenever he's had the opportunity to play, like we see here against the Ducks two years ago, he's made things happen. As I said, he's a true leader, he's mistake-free, he's the kind of guy who put it on the line all the time. You see a wonderful option play there in the rain. Great player and a team captain he's elected for very important reasons. On the other side of the ball, one of the team captains is Tony Obilovich, a four-year starter, great bloodline, he's a hitter all the way. When they recruited this guy, Jimmy, they didn't take a stopwatch. They opened his heart, checked how big it was, and gave him a ride. Well, for the University of Wyoming, they may have the best receiver in the nation in Ryan Yarborough. Well, Ryan Yarborough, around here they call this Yarborough country, Jimmy. Um, he led the nation last year, as you can see, in um, receiving yardage, 1,351. He's a very talented athlete, got great speed, great size. He's one of the top three rated pro prospects in the country. He also had the second most receptions in the country last year. You'll see him in every position except tight end, running back, you name it. On the defensive side, they've got a cornerback who's the only returning starter for the Cowboys. His specialty, though, is kicks and punt returns. He led the WAC, or was close to the top of the WAC, and was the all-conference WAC, all-WAC conference punt and kickoff return man. Take a look at the speed this young man shows. Outruns three people. He'll be doing this, and this is a strength for Wyoming. Oregon State has to find a way to stop it. Well, joining us again this year is David Endress. He's down in the field. Let's go down and join him. David? Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. It is just a gorgeous day right down here on the floor of War Memorial Stadium. And we're down on the floor, but think about it. We're 7,200 feet up in elevation, and that means conditioning comes to mind. Now, you have to wonder, Oregon State, of course, plays in the Willamette Valley, almost sea level. Will that affect them today? Well, most coaches say if you're in shape, 
it's not going to affect you. That means the mental aspect comes in. Will the players think about it? Will they think about getting winded? Will they think about, geez, we're up here 7,200 feet? Coaches doubt it, but we'll see how it all pans out and see if Oregon State's stamina keeps up throughout the game. Back up to you guys. All right, David, don't get sunburned down there. Well, we're delighted you're with us for the start of the 1993 college football season, and we'll begin when we return. Again, everybody, Jimmy Jones along with Steve Priest and David Endress, and in just a few moments, we'll kick off the 1993 college football season here in Laramie, Wyoming. This will be the fourth game of the series between these two, and uh, it should be a very, very important game. I know, Steve, we were talking last night, and you feel this is of utmost importance. Well, I think this is the most important game that Jerry Pettibone's um, kids and his staff have played since they came to us trying to establish a running game the first game of the season they're trying to establish an offensive game plan we will see a whole different Oregon State team offensively than last year taking a look at the series between these two and it's a short one the Cowboys lead it two to one the Beavers lost 28 to nothing in 1958 lost 30 to 10 and 80 and one and 84 walloping the Cowboys 41 to 14 the toss of the coin has been made and Wyoming has won the toss and they'll elect to receive. The head coach is Joe Tiller in his third year. He's won nine and lost 13, tied one. He's a five and seven in the whack from last season. At home, his teams are very, very successful. Six, five, and one. And we're ready now to go for the kickoff. It'll be Brook Knight. Oh, excuse me, Wyoming will be kicking off. Hey, we got the wrong information. We apologize for that. So Wyoming will be kicking off. It'll be Chris Mindlin moving into the ball. Here we go. And it goes out of the end zone. Of course, in this lighter air, that ball is going to travel considerably more. It'll come out to the 20-yard line, and it'll be first and 10 for Oregon State. Here are the starters. Ian Shields, of course, is the quarterback. They've been very impressed with him. Chris Cross moves into the starting spot at wide receiver. J.J. Young, John Young, and Chad Paulson complete the backfield. The offensive line, Brad Barcroft, has moved from lineman to tight end. Adam Albaugh is starting his fourth consecutive season. Then the Tonga connection of Starling Latu, Johnny Fenga, Eli Kalanavalu, and John Garrett. Here we go. First down and 10 for the Beavers. First play of the season. Shields early to his right. is trapped for a loss. And he goes down at about the 18-yard line. A nice play by Corey Talich, a 206-pound senior, coming from his weak linebacker spot. We see a shot of Ian Shields there. If they run this option again, Ian does everything right, just gets tripped up. Again, Oregon State has their offense in, meaning many formations, many different sets, and an established floor leader right here. So they make the spot of the ball at the 19, which makes it second down. Second down and 11. Beavers spread the field to the near side. What a hit. John Young smacked in the middle. Good, strong hit by Mark Brook. Defensively, it's Tyrone Williams, John Burrow, Thomas Williams, and Kurt Whitehead along the front line. Joe Cummings, Ryan Folsom, and Corey Talich are the three linebackers. The secondary, Prentice Roan, and he's the one to keep your eye on. Rob Levin, Kenny Johnson, and Wade Constance. So now it's third down and ten for the Beavers. And Shields looking to throw. Gets it off, and it is caught by Chris Cross. And that's a first down, Beavers. But Jimmy, I think if you're a Wyoming coordinator, oh, he called it out of bounds. Wow. Oh, my. Well, we'll look at that again. This is the sprint out. Oregon State did not have a sprint out in last year. This year, Ian Shields has an opportunity to get outside. We don't see the feet right there, but sure looked into me, Jimmy. Boy, indeed it did. Might get a shot at it on this side. Oh, there's a toe out. Good call by the official. That is the sprint out, which will be a featured 
pass formation this year, a featured, a featured pass pattern. This is Tim Colas. He's been kicking very well this fall. His average was 41-6 last year. Excellent. And of course, he booted that long 72-yarder against Kansas. Prentiss Roan is the sole return man for Wyoming. Well hit. Nose rolls over, and Roan takes it at the 25-yard line. In trouble there. Paulson gets a smack at him. Can't get him. And it looked like Obilovich who makes the tackle. And boy, he is a fired-up young man. His daddy, Mad Dog Jack Obilovich, the great All-America from Oregon State years ago, is here to watch his son. Here's the lineups for Wyoming. Joe Hughes is their quarterback, and they like him a lot. Of course, Ryan Yarbrough, the All-America. Brent Tillman, Ryan Christopherson, and Terry Hendricks. Tillman was a change. He's starting today instead of Richard Peace. Mike Jones, Jeff Pinnick, Jared Heideman, Greg Scanlon, Cody Kelly, and Steve Cyphers. The offensive line for Wyoming. First down in 10. The spot of the ball at the 23-yard line. Joe Hughes, the quarterback. He'll throw on first down. If he can find a receiver. It is caught by Yarborough. Oh, there's that same official calling this one out of bounds, Jimmy. At least he's consistent. Reggie Tung on the coverage for Oregon State. See Mr. Yarborough saying, but my feet were in there. This is a bootleg. It's a featured play by Wyoming. They get the quarterback outside, and you see the tight end coming across. Jones, he's the primary. There's Yarborough on the sideline. Again, just the toe out. Ryan Yarborough, 6'2", 192-pound senior. He declined to come out in the NFL draft last year. He wanted to finish his career here at Wyoming. Boy, the coach is glad about that. Second down and 10. This is the fullback, Christopherson. Opilovich makes a stop. He's going to get a lot of tackles today. Looking at the defensive lineups for Oregon State, they've gone to a three-man defensive set. Chad DeSully, Tom Holmes, and Mark Schultz, the starters. Pretty deep, that linebackers. Dennis Edwards, Rico Petrini, Corey Hewitt starting today, and Tony Obilovich. And in the secondary, Reggie Tung, Michael Hale, William Ephraim, and he's just had a tremendous fall camp, along with Herschel Curry. Well, it's third down and five for the Cowpokes. Short drop, about a two-step drop, and it is caught, but there's a flag thrown. The reception by Mike Jones, the number 11 all-time career receiver. But, Jimmy, they come out in so many multiple one-back sets and just throw little flare passes, slants from the outside, all kinds of little dinky patterns off a one- and three-step drop, which means you can't get a blitz or a rush there. Now, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Oregon State's three-man front because they intend to put pressure out of a very new defense that Wyoming has known nothing about. That's right. To our knowledge, Wyoming is not aware of the defense that Oregon State will put up with that three-man front. But, of course, they practiced with it all spring and all fall. Now, it looks like they're conferring with Tony Obilovich, which is an offensive foul and uh, takes the Beavers out of a first down situation. Well, Wyoming is marching backwards, so it will be the penalty. The on the offense, an ineligible receiver caught the pass. He was covered up by a wide receiver. We have a loss, no loss of down, third down. Oh, that's a long one. It moves the ball back to the 15-yard line. 12.34 to go in the ball game, and we're just underway here in Wyoming. The referee today, by the way, is Jeff Baker, Tom Meyer, the umpire, Stuart Ross, the lineman, John Lothrop, line judge, Claire Gaussman, the field judge, side judge is John Freeman, and the back judge is Gordon Burke. Here we go, third and long for Wyoming, backed up to their 15-yard line. Hughes under a rush, Obilovich gets a hand on him, and the ball is thrown incomplete. A fine play by Tony O., he started all but the Oregon game last year. 6'1", 206-pound senior from Portland's Jesuit High School. Well, we can't kid anybody and say that Oregon State had a pass rush last year. This is what the 3-4 is there for. They got outstanding linebackers, and many of them look at Obilovich come from the outside. The offensive linemen don't know who to pick up, and that's just a great job by Hughes. He should have been sacked. Excellent job by Oregon State's defense, and a nice call by Rocky Long. Brian Gregert, the sophomore from Elkhorn, Nebraska, will punt on fourth down. He averaged 36.7 yards per punt last year with a long of 64. Oregon State's a good punt return team. 
way too short to get much on. Joe Douglas calls for the free catch, and Oregon State will have excellent field position around the 45-yard line, and we'll be back with the Oregon State first to 10 right after this. <laughs> No score here in the first quarter in Laramie, Wyoming. Oregon State first down and 10, just shy of the 45-yard line. Shields across the 45 to about the 47, so it's a short gain on the play. Joe Cummings makes the spot. He's been moved from middle linebacker this year and plays in the strong linebacker spot. Wyoming has lost two in a row going back to last season. Oregon State, however, has lost eight straight and more importantly, they've lost five in a row on the road, and they're playing a team in Wyoming that has been very, very successful. They've won 72% of their home openers over the last 100 years. Second down and eight for Oregon State at the 46. This is Young. Good job by Young battling for that first down yardage and comes very close. However, there's a bag down on the 45-yard line. Mark Brook makes the tackle, a 220-pound sophomore for Wyoming. It looked like an offsides on the Oregon State right side of the line. The formation right there, Jimmy, was a double slot, and that's a featured formation for this spread offense. Oregon State in tens. You can see the spread right here. Right tackle John Garrett just a little bit early. But this spread gives Oregon State the opportunity to throw or run. It's what the coaches have wanted to put in for three years, but just haven't been able to do it. Well, that's a tough penalty. That wipes out the first down by Oregon State. And Garrett, who committed the foul, it's ironic because he was the most consistent offensive lineman last year for Oregon State. So now the ball is spotted back on the 41. Second down and 13. Oregon State with a winning mark against the WAC over the years. I'd like to extend that a little today. The ball is caught, and going out of bounds is J.J. Young, who was hampered by injuries last year. Joe Cummings runs him out of bounds, but it's a nice pickup by J.J. Young from Ian Shields. Again, this is the sprint out that Oregon State features. They did not even have it in their repertoire last year. Just didn't have the people who could do it, could get it done by containing that outside end by actually cutting the outside contain man. This year they've got those kinds of people who can take care of that from an offensive halfback position. Another flag is down, Steve, over by the 40-yard line. Wow. And it's going to be against Oregon State, it appears. We've seen very few penalties by the Beavers in practice this year. In the offense, six men on the line of scrimmage, five penalty, repeat second down. Well, Oregon State was the second least penalized team in the Pac-10 last year. They average less than six penalties a game. Well, they have some interesting things they do with their wide receivers. When they get in the slot and the trips, they move people on and off the line of scrimmage. Um, just mistakes. They've got to clarify those a bit. Possibly somebody a little bit too far off and another guy just a little bit on, and you couldn't tell, so you got that kind of call. John Young, J.J. Young, and Chad Paulson in the backfield. Paulson has not yet touched the ball. Very smart, dependable player. And a candidate this year for the Doak Walker Award. Come on. And another penalty. Delay of game will be indicated against Oregon State. Well, this is not the auspicious start that Oregon State wanted, Steve. No, it certainly isn't. And this is not something that I would expect uh, out of this team, the way they practiced, the way they're fired up for this game. they got to get the signals in quicker than that. So that moves the ball back to the 31-yard line, so it's a long ways to go now. Second down, and 23. They're lining up against Oregon State's standard set and almost a 9- or 10-man front again. John Young is clobbered as he crosses the 30. Thomas Williams and John Burrow, the two inside tackles combine on the stop at about the 31-yard line, so the Beavers will have to punt it. So, oh, excuse me, it's third down. It'll be third down. Had so many penalties, we can't remember here. Very difficult. Oregon State will not allow this team to sit in a nine or ten man front like they're allowing him to do in the first couple of series. This is just getting the game plan going. Third down and 23. 
Shields delivers over the middle, and it's incomplete. J.J. Young, the intended receiver, in a pickoff there, possible, but it didn't come about. No. Ryan Folsom on the coverage for Wyoming. So that will bring up fourth down, and Tim Collis will have to come up there and punt. His last punt was 53 yards, so he's off to a good start. This is an excellent return, man, and Oregon State's got to have the coverage today or Prince Rome will turn something into a big play. Nice. Another hit. fine punt by Colas. Roan will receive it on the 24. He goes down, and he was down. So the ball will be spotted at that point at the 24-yard line. First down and 10 for the Cowboys. For more Beaver Athletics, watch Beaver Territory with host Bob Akamian and Scott Lynn. This month's show takes an in-depth look at Beaver Football 93 and Centennial Celebration Festivities. Catch all that and more tomorrow at 4, right here on Prime Sports Northwest. Well, this is a big series right here. Oregon State did very well on this against this offense the first series, and this is Wyoming's strength. So another strong series here really helps the Beavers. Wyoming with seven re uh, returning starters on this lineup offensively. They have seven defensively as well. And once again, the penalties go. My goodness, how many penalties have we had? Four? Four penalties and, and just some over anxious. we still got 9.31 to play in the first quarter. On the offense. Well, the defenses aren't getting penalized. <laughs> Well, it is the first game of the season. Maybe it's a case of nerves down there, but in any event, they've dominated so far. But Jimmy, there's a great example of what a 3-4 does when you got active linebackers. Those offensive linemen have to, many times, run around another offensive lineman if they aren't switching to pick up their um, assignments. So that's what brought that about, was Corey Hewitt jumping. Second down. Pratt in motion. Strong rush put on, and Hughes gets it away just in time for Yarborough in and out of his hands. Incomplete at the 45, and the coverage was by Herschel Curry. And he, too, had a fine camp this fall. Herschel Curry, a 193-pound senior from San Jose, and he did not play high school football. Well, uh, he's, he's playing man-to-man. -man. They do have a free safety here, but Herschel's got him inside out. Look at this play. Excellent play. Herschel's got great size for a cornerback, together with 4-4 speed. You're right, he did not play high school football. Second down and 15. Again, it's Pratt, the motion man. Christofferson has a big hole. And Christofferson gets close to the 30, not nearly enough for a first down. But a nice piece of running by Ryan Christofferson. He is their leading returning rusher with 178 yards. That shows you how much they throw together. This is just a little delay draw, trap. Got the off lineman pulling across, the excellent blocking. Defensive back has to come up and make the play. Nice play by Michael Hale. So it brings up third down and five for the folks. That's Damon Turner going in motion. Short drop. Incomplete. The intended receiver was the fullback coming out of the backfield, Ryan Christofferson. So that brings up fourth down and five. Corey Hewitt was the man on the coverage. Kane Rogers is the starter at the lift inside linebacker spot, but he's had some injury problems, so Corey Hewitt is getting the nod today. And a very experienced player, a starter two years ago before his injury. Heavy in linebackers for the Beavers. They got seven or eight of them that can play. Ryan Gregard. Boy, that's a short punt. Jimmy, he's lined up real short. It's a 10-yard punt formation. Douglas takes it at the 23, waits for a moment, and is hit at the spot of reception and finally gets forward across the 25. Marcus Harris uh, that was on the a stop. Clip right off the bat right there. Tackle by Patrick Larson. The close official did not see it, but the official from down the field saw it. It was a push in the back, just uh, young, somebody young who's uh, not familiar with the fact you just got to let it go if your man's beating you. You may have noticed the uh, hash marks have been moved in. There's been a change in the rules. There's another important change we'll talk about. But that uh, hash mark 
moving in is going to benefit Oregon State, Steve. Oh, very much so. It's an offensive benefit all the way across the board. It brings it in seven feet, Jimmy, which keeps the defense from just loading to the strong side of the field and using the sideline as a 12th defender on the weak side. More important for a team like Oregon State that calls their play direction from the line of scrimmage. Tremendous advantage. The quarterback just reads the direction and goes with it, particularly in spread formations like this. It is first down and 10. Shields, it is caught by J.J. Young. Across the 30 for the first down. J.J. Young, the 185-pound junior from Pasadena with that excellent speed, stopped by Corey Talich and Kenny Johnson, but not before he racks up the first down. Well, you'll see J.J. coming from the left side of your screen. It's going to be a featured pattern all year. They just bring him into the middle. J.J. Young with the ball in the open field is going to bring touchdowns. We'll see that pattern over and over today and all season long. Oregon State averaged only 38 yards a game passing last year. They were the number two in rushing the conference, however. It's back to Paulson. Gets a good hard hit at the 34. Fine smack by Wade Constance. Well, the options, excellent job by Ian of running the option. Oregon State allows their their players to throw with that inside or strong hand on the option. It's something I personally disagree with, but it works for him. Not many times will we see Chad Paulson brought down by one player once he gets that ball. Second down, nine yards for the Beavers. The ball at the 34. J.J. Young again slips it into an extra gear and gets beyond the stake. First down, Beavers' Rob Levin makes the tackle. A good look at the counter. That play that Oregon State didn't get in for about three games last year. You got to have it with the option. You open like the triple, and there come the backs back the other direction. Excellent block by the offside trap. I think that was offside guard. I think that was Sterling Leitu. And the Beavers are moving. A couple of first downs in a row after an adverse situation. First down and 10 Beavers. Ball at the 46-yard line. With the wishbone formation now. Young. Tackled by Tyrone Williams, a second year starter. Short game. Tyrone well spotted around the 48. Tyrone Williams is a second team all WAC performer last year. He's great talent, great speed. He's a typical pass rush defensive lineman and couples with Thomas Williams to really give him a solid defensive line. Probably the strength of their defense. Second down and nine. J.D. Stewart. Oregon State blessed with a good crop of fullbacks. That tackle that time by Brent Schieffer. He was out in the spring because of an injury. He had a back problem. And he makes the tackle as the Beavers get some to make it third down and seven. You mentioned fullbacks. Oregon State's carrying five, five fullbacks. They didn't even have a couple of three of them they could count on when Jerry came here. These people can all play, and they've even got a true freshman they're carrying. Whether he plays or not, we'll not know. Third down and six for the Beavers, and Shields to throw. Incomplete. Not close. Coverage man was Joe Cummings, and so again, the Beavers are three and out, and Colas will have to punt it. Yeah, Jimmy, I believe Ian Shields threw that ball away. Uh, the inside man was covered pretty well as primary receiver. He did have somebody else out in the flat that was the companion pattern. He didn't see him, and he threw it well over their head so there was no pass interception. That's one of the reasons Ian's in there. Here's Prentice Roan. Excellent return man. He averaged 21.1 yards per kickoff return last year, his longest being 58 yards. Colas, who's been punting very well so far, gets a high punt. Roan scrambling for and trying to get out of the way of. And it'll be down to around the eight-yard line. And we'll be back at Laramie's War Memorial Stadium in a moment. No score in the ball game. 5.45 remaining in the first quarter. First down and 10 at the 15 for Wyoming. Yarbrough the motion man this time to the far sideline. Here comes the blitz. Nice play by Rico Petrini. And Mark Schultz. Petrini was blitzing. And 
and Schultz helped out as they stop him uh, for a loss in the play. Well, take a look at this. First of all, look at Petrini, 49. He just shoots it and comes hard. There he goes, and he gets there. That's the speed at the Rico. He's a 4-5 linebacker in the 40, but Mark Schultz makes an excellent play, and he's a guy that won't go away for Oregon State. He's not going to give up that job. Second down and 11. This is Pratt motioning to the near side. Christofferson. Uh-uh. Maybe a yard. If people think they're going to run against Oregon State's linebackers on delayed stuff, they're going to have a long afternoon. These kids are too quick, too aggressive. Packy Ina on the tackle at 269 junior, junior college transfer from Snow College. And he's a guy, Steve, that uh, really provided a lot of competition with for Tom Holmes for that job. Well, and he's playing right now at the right end in, in place of Schultz. He can play all three positions across there. Now they got two chunks in there in Holmes and Ina on the right side and in the center. Third down and eight and Hughes to throw. Overthrown. Pratt was the intended receiver and all over him was Herschel Curry. Another fine job of defending along that far sideline by Herschel Curry. I hope we see this position. This is something that a guy who's playing his second year of of uh, defense in his life he gets in front of Yarborough he's standing directly in his pass so when Yarborough turns up the field on the hook and go he's right in his way excellent job by Herschel Curry usually takes a little experience to, to be able to do that and Joe Hughes is 0 for 5 through the air for Wyoming and that of course is the strength of their offense Gregard standing back on the 6 Douglas on the 34 Pick it up, Joe. They touched it. And it's down there at the 31-yard line. We spoke a moment ago about the hash marks being moved in, and there's another important rule, and you'll see any player oozing blood from a cut, he'll come off the field. Well, with the new medical discussions we hear in so many sports, um, they anytime they see a ball as, or a player, as you said, uh, oozing, they will take him out of the game immediately. If you can't uh, put a patch on it in the 25 seconds, he's got to come out. The officials will stop the game. Another in, uh, important change, Jimmy, is the fumble ruski's gone. We don't get to see the fumble ruski this year, at least legally. <laughs> First down for the Beavers. The spot of the ball is at the 38-yard line. <laughs> Shields with a nice fake to Stewart. There it is. Pitches there it the is. last second of J.J. Young. He's got some room oh. down the sideline, but is tripped up at the 45 by Rob Levine. Levine, who played both safeties last year, owns the free safety spot this year. Great job by Ian Shields. He'll stay down the line of scrimmage, never loses any ground. Look at the fake. Everybody eats it up. Now watch Ian. He gets outside, waits to option somebody right here. And now J.J. on artificial turf probably scores right here. First down for the Beavers at the 45. Paulson will be hit for loss. The first man in on the tackle was Brent Schieffer. He's an excellent pass rusher. He moved from number three tight end last year. <laughs> Steve Hendricks also in on the tackle for Wyoming. This is the cross buck again. See the offensive lineman coming across, but just very good penetration on the part of the defense. Excellent play. Adam Albaugh better, better get out of the way right there. Paulson yields a two-yard loss, so it'll be second down and 12 for the Beavers at the 47-yard line. New formation here, a trips formation. Run complete to Stewart, the fullback. He gets to the 50, and that's it. Wade Constant, quarterback, makes the stop along with defensive tackle Thomas Williams. Well, that's the first screen in three years that Oregon State's thrown, Jimmy. <laughs> we have not seen a screen because you don't throw a screen if you haven't got a pass offense. Pretty good job there. They just need one block on the outside. Get there. The offense lineman's got to knock Prentice Roan down, and then they've got to play. Just a step short from that offensive tackle. Third down and long for the Beavers. They need 15 for a first. Still showing to the sideline, way overthrown. The nearest receiver was Young. Wade Constance, the cover man. So that brings up fourth down and the putting situation. 
The right. ball spotted right at the 50-yard line. I don't expect it this early in the game. I don't expect to see a, a, a play that would be a fake. This is a good position for it, but right now Oregon State's out playing Wyoming defensively, so keep them down there close to the goal line. Kick the ball. Colas, in the last scrimmage this fall, averaged 58 yards per punt. Whoa. He's been hitting it beautifully today. Look at this one. And all the way into the end zone, Brentis Roan, of course, lets go, so it will be brought out to the 20-yard line. 58-yard punt by Tim Colas. I'm, I'm glad Tim's getting that professional attitude. He kicked that one clear over the end zone. All kickers, when they do that, kind of snap their fingers like I didn't want to do that. I wanted to kick it, kick it out of bounds on the five. <laughs> yeah. You know they're thinking of that average. <laughs> Oregon State back in their nickel coverage. John Wiesner's in as a as a fifth back, playing linebacker. First down and ten at the twenty. The other, or rather, Christopherson. Christopherson has run very well. He's had the holes. Crosses the thirty for the first down, where he's met by John Wiesner and Buster Elihi. Good call. It's a quick hitter. Take a look at this. They send motion and just hand the ball off the fullback. Nothing delayed. It's got to be quick against Oregon State. They just bait the queen to seem quickly and go between those linebackers that are coming. That's the first first down of the afternoon for Wyoming. Two minutes, five seconds to play in the first quarter. Good, solid hit right at the 45 on Damon Turner. Stopped by Rico Petrini. Oregon State deep and experienced at that linebacker spot. Petrini, a quick linebacker, with speed under 4-6 in the 40. Well, Wyoming's trying to establish the run here, but again, they need to stay with a quick hitter, not a delayed eye pattern or one-back pattern like that, where it takes them a long time to get the line of scrimmage. Second down and six for the Pokes. Sully made contact. A lot of people moving there. But that is, again, offensive tight end. Going to miss his assignment because he sees the linebackers coming inside, and he's got to get there to pick up a block on the Sully, who's inside shoulder. And Coach he's Red, movement. Red, five, yards. Five, yards. five yards. Five yards. Repeat, Repeat second, second down. down. This shakes those offensive linemen up, this, this uh, continued blitz. Always see four people take a look at the tight end there and moves. Then they make him pay for his movement. Well, that was Wyoming's priority this fall to develop the offensive line. Look at those penalties already. Three penalties for 25 yards for Wyoming. Turner, uh-uh, dropped for a loss. A swarm of Beavers led by Rico Petrini. Turner tackled in the backfield. Tony Obilovich there as well. Play for the Beavers. Good shot at Tony O, defensive captain along with Herschel Curry. And again, he and Herschel are chosen because they're vocal and they're can-do-it guys. They do it themselves before they ask anybody else to do it. See David Kipke coming in at the right defensive end. And again, Oregon State's in a two-man line with five linebackers right now. Two-man line. Here comes Obilovich. Ball is incomplete, intended for Yarborough. My goodness. He's not pass. caught a ball yet. He's caught a pass in 26 consecutive games coming into this afternoon's play. 0 in for 6 today. Interesting, interesting formation. Two defensive linemen. You see Kipke at the outside left. Look at the pressure with, with about four linebackers coming inside. Nice calls by Rocky Long. He's really mixing it up real well as a defensive coordinator. Now we need a return. Joe Douglas is capable of running one back. And the way this guy's kicking, he's going to hit one low that, that Joe can return. Not that one. High kick by Gregory. Douglas trying to run away with it. It cannot. Loses back to the 15. Mark Brook on the tackle for Wyoming. Time becoming short in the first quarter. Just 24 seconds to go. It'll be Oregon State football, first down and 10 at the 11. A 51-yard punt that time by Brian Greger, a fine athlete. He learned 12 letters in high school, playing football, basketball, baseball, and track. He was a busy man. He sure was. He's, 
he's got a tremendous advantage if Oregon State's going to let him take advantage of it. He's kicking from 10 yards deep, so he's got five yards more than everybody on his average anyway. Oregon State has to put pressure on him. J.D. Stewart, the fullback, cracks straight ahead. Stewart carries the football. Corey Talich makes the tackle. Corey Talich has been around the ball a lot today. He's a 6'3 senior. And he's the one that moved from the middle linebacker spot to weak. Very active, very aggressive linebackers. Play pass should work against these guys. These linebackers should hit that fullback all the time and give the Oregon State the opportunity for the three-step drop and the throw off their triple option. Well, Wyoming thinks their number one strength is that defensive line. Well, time has expired the first quarter of play. After one in Laramie, Wyoming, there's no score. You're watching Oregon State Beaver football on Prime Sports Northwest. We're back at War Memorial Stadium in Laramie. Clouds starting to move in now, but it's been a very pleasant day. Temperature close to 80 degrees in a clear sky when we began the day. It'll be Oregon State football, first down and 10. War Memorial opened in 1950. They've, Wyoming since that time has gone to a number of bowls, including the Gator Bowl and the Sugar Bowl, Fiesta Bowl. In 1990, they were in the night, the uh, Copper Bowl. And then their fortunes took a downward trend and they brought Joe Tiller in. I want to know what war was here, Jimmy. <laughs> Shields looking for a receiver. Trying to run away from trouble. Is dropped down at the 15-yard line by Ty Hopkins, a 255-pound junior. That defensive line, Steve, is not very big for Wyoming, but they move around well. They are very aggressive, and, and I believe they are the strongest part of this def or the defense and possibly the team. Actually, plenty of time there. But Oregon State's patterns are predominantly one and two person patterns. So if the first guy's open and covered, uh, Ian has to run for it. It's third down and 11. The ball just inside the 15 for the Beavers. Shields with the option, going to keep it. To the 20. Cuts up to the 25. Hit hard there and stopped in his track by Kenny Johnson. And it's short of the first down. Well, a nice play. The option went well. Just a yard short of the first down. Well, I can't imagine Wyoming's going to continue to let Colos just have all, all day to punt the way he's hitting the ball. Oregon State did not have a blocked punt last year after a dismal time the year before. They changed their protection, put those three big guys back there to give him some personal protection, and they haven't had a block in over a year. Hope I didn't curse him. <laughs> a little bit high in the staff at all kinds of time for Colas to get the ball away. Prentice Roan retreating to his 23-yard line. And he's bottled up. That's a magnificent job of picking up about 10 yards after he was trapped, brought down by Chris Cross. Well, that's a strong receiver. He's only 5'8", and he weighs about 190 pounds. So he's probably got legs about the size of uh, Sterling Leitu, but for Sterling Leitu. Very good size for a punt returner, and one guy isn't going to be able to ankle tackle him, but very good coverage by Oregon State. Another outstanding punt that time by Tim Cole is 52 yards. Now he's got to be averaging over 50 yards so far this afternoon. He's going to want to stay in Wyoming. Yeah, <laughs> or bring this air with him to Corvallis. First down and 10 for Wyoming at the 35. Now this is a young man, Terry Hendricks, who they didn't know was going to play in his first game or not. He had some eligibility problem, but he's a good back. He's stopped by David Kepke, 250-pound sophomore. He's a load, 230-some-odd pounds. He had a lot of yards as a freshman two years ago. He was hurt last year, but he, uh, he may not be in shape yet. He's, he is a chunk, and it doesn't appear from the way he's being used that he's in shape yet. The average... Well, he picks up about five yards on this carry, so it's second down and five. Look at this rush. Yes. There you see it. There's a defensive Buster, back. Buster Elahi, the backup right cornerback, an excellent athlete, and one of those from freshmen, a help by Mark Schultz for the big loss. Well, Buster's coming from the weak side. He's playing as a nickel defensive back, and he caught that bootleg right where he's supposed to get. 
right in the quarterback's chest. Take a look at that. Nice play. And there's another safety coming. Oregon State's sending a lot of people. Oh, I mentioned that uh, Elihi is from Texas. There are eight players from Texas on this Beaver squad and an awful lot of talent in those eight. Third down and 14. Yarborough comes motion to their sideline. And this is Christofferson. Not going to get so far this time. He's had some excellent holds to run in. The tackle by Tom Holmes. Take a look at this, Jimmy. Where Oregon State recruits from. 43 from California, 42 from Oregon, and then a jump down to Texas tying with Washington. And that's the emphasis that Jerry Pettibone and his staff with Texas Roots have put down on that Southwest Conference. You notice it says 10 from Texas. The two of those are redshirted and outstanding players. Well. Regard to kick to Douglas. Douglas looked like he signaled for a fair catch, but apparently not. It sure looked like he signaled for a fair catch, and we don't know if he had enough room to receive it or not. Well, if you see it again, it looks like Douglas signals for it, and that gets his head took, taken off, and then uh, runs with the ball sort of a reaction. be interesting to see what the officials do, because he did not have much of an opportunity, and quite frankly, uh, Joe or someone ought to be in there pleading his case. Interference with the kick by Yarbrough. First down. Yes, that's a good call. Joe Douglas did not have the opportunity right there. He's got it signaled, but look at that. And then he reacted like a football player reacts. Nice to have a redshirt freshman back there that looks like he's a fifth-year senior catching the ball. Douglas, who participated on the scout team in 92, has excellent instincts, and they expect a lot from him. Instincts is an interesting word. That basically means you got a kid who's got a lot of intestinal fortitude and guts and is willing to let it hang out. Joe Douglas is that kind of kid, a former player of the year in the state of Oregon, out of Salem. First down for the Beavers, the ball at the Oregon State 35. Chris Cross goes wide to the top of your screen. Unbounced line right here. Chad Paulson. And Paulson just can't shake away. Darnell Rory with the tackle. Let's go down to David Endress on the field. David. Guys, the thing to look for, I think, as this game wears on, score nothing to nothing right now, is Oregon State's size advantage. They're about 20 pounds heavier on the offensive line than the Wyoming Cowboys are. Now, as this game wears on, you would think Oregon State's size and physicalness might take over. It'll be interesting to see as this game wears into the later quarters. I think David's comment is excellent, Jimmy. Uh, not only is it a, a size issue here, but also um, a depth issue. Oregon State has depth for the first time in as long as I can remember. You look at their, uh, here's the beef. <laughs> this is great. 286 pound average, and I think it's even more than 20 pounds against that defensive line. The strength of Wyoming's defense, but not very deep at all. Cedric Thomas on the last carry. Now it's third down and five for the Beavers. Nice fake to Thomas. And Cameron Reynolds is dragged down by Rob Levin. Levin has been the most active of those secondary defenders today. Going to get about a yard and that's all. Take a look at this. This is the triple option. They just got very good penetration. Nice job of defense there. Ian had no choice when he's forced off the line that deep. And that triple option uh, has got to be maintained closer to the line. Again, Tim Cole is punting and a very difficult man back there catching the ball. Perfect snap. Ooh, there's the return ball. It's not nearly as good as earlier balls. Prentice Roan at the 20. Look at him, great tackle. He is a tough, tough young man. A tackle finally made by Michael Hale, but there's a penalty flag thrown at the 26-yard line. Well, that was a return ball kick. It was low and end over end. Just got there a lot quicker than Tim's other balls have gotten there. See a good shot of Prentice Rowan. Size of those uh, legs and backside, that's why you can't bring him down, folks. Illegal block in the back. On the return, 10 yards, first down. 
Actually, Jimmy, that official's got the same set of legs and backside of Prentice Roan. <laughs> <laughs> That's our referee, Jack Baker, today. <laughs> Take a look here. Let's see if we can pick it up. Top middle. Oh, right there in the dead center of the screen. Shot in the back, and that's Antonio Bilovich. Again, that's Tony out there hustling. Interesting, Oregon State has not got um, any player on more than two special teams this year. Usually they've had to, because of depth, play the same people over and over. It means a lot of tired guys in the third and fourth quarter, but Jerry's very happy with only having the, uh, or with having the depth situation the way he has this year. First down and 10, Cowboys, now at their 16-yard line, and here again comes the blitz, short drop by Hughes. Complete the Yarborough and trips along the sideline. Goes out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. Forced out by Herschel Curry. But a nice gain by Yarborough. He's well, had two straight 1,000-yard seasons. Well, this is a guy who just catches the ball out of any formation and runs with it. Now, Herschel's got to square up and don't leave your feet and wrap your arms, Herschel. There's a situation where you can't try to knock the guy down. You're the only guy out there. You grab him. Hughes now one of seven through the air for the Cowboys. First down and ten at the 27, ah! Wyoming. Lays it off short to Pratt. And Pratt gets to the first down stake, it appeared, where her is banged down by Buster Elihi. Pratt, a Northwest lad from Kennewick, Washington. 171-pound junior and a junior college transfer. Well, take a look at this. It's the three-step drop again. That's, again, how they will stop and neutralize the blitz that Oregon State's been throwing at them. Buster has got to get there quicker. He's man-to-man -man on that guy, or looks as though he's man-to-man. -man. First down and ten. Look out. Hughes hit just as he delivered the ball by Tony Obilovich. I think his daddy got to him today. <laughs> fired him up. His dad was fired up. I'm going to check every number 55 on the field. <laughs> you see a shot of Tony there. I couldn't tell whether Tony was covering the tight end or whether he got to use. I think he mentioned he got to use. Good force there. Let's take a look and see who gets there. Coming from the outside both ways. Boom. Now that's Michael Hale, and Tony is covering the tight end. The linebacker is going to be responsible to keep the tight end away from the middle. Second down and ten. Nice gain for Damon Turner before he's stopped by John Fairbank. Turner can play either halfback in this offense, and he's a strong kid. He was an outstanding high school wrestler, and he's their fastest running back. He's a big play right here. Expect to see somebody in motion or spread out across the field and just get somebody in the flat for three yards. Either a slant or a flat, and this is basically Washington State's offense, which Joe T Tiller coordinated three years ago. They're down and four. You see it right drop. there. Caught by Pratt, but he's going to be stopped. And they will not get the first down. Well schooled, Jimmy. Rocky, Tom, Rocky Long's uh, calling these offensive plays as a defensive coordinator. Nice job. That's uh, Michael Hale and Buster. I'm not sure. William Ephraim. Good William job. William Ephraim is in there as well. And he's just had a tremendous fall so far. Well, Dregard will punt it away to Joe Douglas. 7.52 to play in the first half, and there is no score here in Laramie. Coming into the game, Wyoming was a 10-point favorite. End over end, and a fair catch called for by Douglas at around the 14-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 Oregon State when we return right after this. Welcome back to Laramie. Jimmy Jones along with Steve Priest and David Endress. There's no score. First down and 10 for the Beavers at their own 14-yard line. Shields fakes the toss and comes close to the 20-yard line where he's met by Steve Hendricks. Well, Ian misread that. He had the option there, and he cut up trying to gain the yards. He just misguessed. Didn't read it. What Oregon State tried to do there is unbalanced to the wide side of the field. Catch him short side. Look what he's got right there. Option that man, and you got to play. He had everybody inside. Mike Summers called the right play, had it there. Same unbalanced now. Let's see if they run to the other side or stay weak. Now Shields got five yards on the play, so it's second down and five. 
Going the other way now. Now here's the option behind Paulson and Shields covers it at the 11. Well, that's really the first miscue. 39 fumbles last year for the Beavers, and they lost 20 of them. Rob Levin on the coverage for Wyoming. When they're stringing you out like this and just stringing you deeper, you either got to get rid of the ball or go up the field. It just helps the defense to just string out. Take a look at Ian. Right there, make the good pitch, and you still got to play in a first down. It's too bad. So it'll be third down and 13. We have six minutes, 24 seconds to go in the second quarter. They got him spread out. Let's see that screener draw. J.J. Young motions to the bottom of your screen. And Shields is down. I don't know if he missed the handoff. I think he turned the wrong way. Let's take a look. It was a quick opener to the fullback. If we get a look at it, it'll look like he goes the wrong way. Let's see where the fullback is. Yeah. Somebody's wrong. Somebody was backwards, either the quarterback or the fullback. And actually, the fullback had a few yards to run. A pair of senior defensive linemen make the stop, Kurt Whitehead and Thomas Williams. And so Colas will exercise that strong leg once more. And an opportunity for some excellent field position here for Wyoming. Oregon State needs a big kick and a good coverage here. The position in the field is gone. There's the kick. Now they need the coverage. Taking it to the 40-yard line. Okay. Good block on the far side. And finally dragged down at the 40-yard line by Brad Barcroft. So the Wyoming Cowboys return that 51-yard punt to the 40-yard line of Oregon State. And that's their best field position today. Sure is. Well, we told you about the success Wyoming has had here at War Memorial. Here you can see those numbers. Overall, they have won 72% of their home openers, and they've been very, very strong here. First down and 10. This is Michael Jones. Dropped for a loss. Fine defensive play by Matt Dickeroff on Terry Hendricks. Dickeroff, only 215 pounds, a freshman from Carmel, and a walk-on. And he, Steve, I guess, was the number one surprise in Absolutely. spring practice. He's worked into what is a nine or ten-man linebacker rotation. He's just done a great job. He'll put on weight and play. Jimmy, this is the first time Wyoming's been inside of the Beavers' territory all day. They lose two on the prior play, second down and 12. Oh, no. He blew that whistle too early. I want to see the contact if we have a replay. We have to count up these penalties. There's been a block of them Dead here ball. in the first half. Ball start on the offense. My Repeat mistake here it was the offense. I thought he blew that on the defense, and I knew that man had not gotten into the neutral zone. That's a fifth penalty against Wyoming. It cost them, or the sixth, rather. It's cost them 45 yards, and that hurts it a sure lot. Does. Well, again, these offensive linemen are concerned that they're going to have their assignment breaking clean inside so they just jump a little bit second down and 17 the ball across midfield to the beaver 47 oh. Hughes throws incomplete nearest man to the ball was ryan yarborough actually the nearest man of the ball was buster illahy <laughs> that's right if he'd thrown a good pass right there illahy would have started his first college game as a true freshman with a smoker Hughes is only three of 11 today for 25 yards he's among the top 10 all-time career passers here at Wyoming 2,706 yards through the air for 14 touchdowns last year. Wow. Take a look Jimmy, we're going to watch total yards right now, pretty balanced, but we've got this uh, two-man front now by Oregon State again. Two linemen and five linebackers. Look at all of them. They look like they're... And here comes the pressure on Hughes. Lays it off to Christopherson and Christopherson is going to get back to the line of scrimmage, but just clearly, Chad Sully had a good strong grip on him. Interesting defensive calls. Rocky Long has got some things going here. And the longer the Beavers stay in this game and believe on themselves, the better chance they're going to have to win this against a team that, as you said, wins 72% at home. Screen call. Oregon State's not only got one guy there, they got three or four. They'll be that way all afternoon. Rocky Long, of course, the offensive court, uh, the defensive coordinator. And Mike Summers, the offensive coordinator for Jerry Pettibone. Oh. Recovered 
And it'll be Oregon State ball. Let's go down to David Edwards. Guys, the defense has done an outstanding job for Oregon State so far today. One of those players in the defensive backfield is Buster Illihi. He's one of these kids that they recruited out of Texas. A bunch of them are, are very talented players. In fact, five of them made this traveling squad. Buster Illihi is one of them. Mark Williams, another defensive back. Just another one of these numerous high school Texas players that are all very talented. First down and ten for the Beavers. Incomplete. Nowhere near Chris Cross. That's difficult. It's a, Ian's thrown out of a three or five step drop. And if he gets any penetration, he hasn't got a throw. If we look at this again, you'll see that Ian steps back. He has a throw. And at the last minute, somebody puts their hand up and it completely blocks. He has to throw it outside and high. Chris Cross was an outstanding performer in that final scrimmage for the Beavers. Had five catches for 49 yards. Second down and 10 for Oregon State. Ball at the 16-yard line of the Beavers. No score in the game as time is becoming short in the first half of play in Laramie. Cameron Reynolds, ooh, fun. Ran right into Brent Schieffer. He's a lad that was moved from the number three tight end spot to back up at right end. Oh, that's a fine, fine hit. It's just second back through. It's a lead play. Hmm. Bingo. Nice play by Schieffer right there. Welcome to Laramie. Third down and nine. 3.09 to go in the half. A little trouble keeping his balance as Shields and he swore he had no, never did recover. And so the Beavers will punt. That was Thomas Williams on the stop. He's a first team All-America in the NFL draft reports receive an All-America team. He's got a world of talent, Jimmy. They question a bit uh, whether he has the heart to play in the NFL. He's kind of a part-time player. Oregon State's had several people this afternoon having a tough time with the turf. Tears up. Take a look at the celebration. Mr. Williams is happy. Again, Oregon State's got to cover this punt. Both these teams having problems converting on third down. They're both 0 for 7. Coldest to press at the 44. Oh, what a block. My goodness. Prentice looking for room that doesn't get too much. Obilovich makes the stop. Oh, what a great block thrown down there by a cowboy. Well, I think that was on Chad Paulson. And Chad, uh, Chad Paulson will remember it. Next time he'll make sure he knows where that guy is. Now let's see. Let's yep. see if it's Steve Hendricks. Yeah, it was 2-9. It's Steve Hendricks. And Ooh. Chad Paulson was the guy he hits. Chad has got to recall. Remember, he's the contain man. He's got to get outside and make sure he keeps this returner inside of him. The receiver set to the bottom of your screen for the Cowboys on first down at the 46. Gets it away just in time. Just barely in time to the tight end, Mike Jones. He's strong. Finally stopped by Herschel Curry. He led all tight ends in the conference last year in receptions. He had 47. Actually, they have two tight ends named Michael Jones, number 81 <laughs> and number 84. Hopefully they tell him to cover a number, not a name. <laughs> See the blitz there? Just almost had a linebacker in his face, and it's a featured pattern to get that tight end across the middle, and he can run with the ball. All Second team all whacked last year. First down and 10. Hughes incomplete. Again, nice. Jones, the tended receiver again, covered by Obilovich. Nice pressure. Nice pressure. Oregon State sends a couple of people. Whenever there's a bootleg, they're sending that off linebacker, off defensive back. And the quarterback's basic at, basically out there with one blocker and two people to block. We were mentioning tight ends a moment ago. The number two tight end is Scott Mimnaw, and he's from Ashland, Oregon. But... He's been hurt today. He's out with a sprained right knee. It's, they list him as doubtful to play. Second down and 10 for Wyoming. Up. Hughes. There's that short drop. Bat it down. And that was Tom Holmes knocking it down for the Beavers. Big sophomore defensive tackle from Ben. Well, Tom Holmes, this was a pick pattern pick all the way for Yarborough and there's the throw and quite frankly if we get a shot of this Yarborough's coming inside wide open. 
So thank goodness for Tom Holmes. And Holmes has great speed. He's the fastest defensive lineman at 4'8 in the 40. He's also the strongest player on the field. He's a true sophomore. Quite, quite frankly, he could be your big play, your Esra Tuala or Sai Fulabadi. He's got to use that speed and strength to make some big plays. He was only 5 of 15 for 34 yards. He completed 58% of his passes last year. Oh, nice. fine coverage by Reggie Tung. Oh. Reggie Tung, a 190-pound sophomore from Arkansas. That, a, that was a miserable call, Jimmy. If we get a shot at this, you'll see the guy calls it from behind the receiver on the other side of the field while he's got somebody directly behind the play that can see the contact center, coming from the other direction. First down. Well, as you hear, they call it pass interference on the Beavers. This is just excellent, excellent going for the ball. Now take a look. Up there for the ball. The thing that coaches go crazy over is when a, an out-of-position referee makes a call. Okay, there's the call, and the, the official on the sideline, on the far side of the field, makes that call. He's not behind the play or looking at the ball. Ball at the 29-yard line of Oregon State. Christofferson runs in straight ahead. Tom Holmes, the tackler. 480-pound bench press by Holmes. I thought he'd have actually gotten up to 500. We'll have to check with Mr. Cowan sometime and find out. Or maybe that was just our SID embellishing on the strength. There's Tom Holmes. Look at that. Sophomore from Ben. Look at those North arms. Ben, excuse me. Look at those arms on that guy. <laughs> We're going to take a break. There's a minute 30 to go, and we'll be back with more from War Memorial Stadium right after this. No score in Laramie, Wyoming. We have a second down and nine to go for the Cowboys. More Pac-10 football comes your way tomorrow evening as the Oregon Ducks travel to Fort Collins, Colorado to face the Colorado State Rams. Tune in to Prime Sports Northwest at 8 p.m. tomorrow to catch the Oregon Ducks season opener. Second down and nine. Ball at the 28-yard line. Trips. Empty formation. Nobody in the backfield. Get there. Hughes running for his life. And Yarborough makes the grab. Takes a lot to bring him down. Boy. Buster Elihi on the stop. He's a true freshman from Texas. Well, this is a, a great call by Rocky. Um, the play's made, and Hughes has got some pretty cute little feet. He gets there. William Ephraim makes this tackle right here. But before that, there's a great opportunity for Oregon State to stack the man. I want to notice one other time we saw Herschel Curry again just taking a, a nosedive tackle, and that's twice. He has not tried to wrap the man up. That's going to cost Herschel a TD. Big play here for the Cowboys. Third down and two with a minute 10 to play in the first half. And Joe Hughes is knocked fumble. down. The ball is loose, picked up by Dennis Edwards. Edwards to the 40-yard line where he's rammed out of bounds by... Oh, yes. Now, I think that was... Frank Tonkovich. So Dennis Edwards with an alert play. There's just the bootleg and what a setup. Who hit him there? It's Michael Hale again. It's a big Dennis, former free safety, former strong safety, starting right outside linebacker. What a great kid. Now that was Jeff Pinnick who made the tackle for Wyoming and not Tonkovich. Get a block there, guys. Now we have 59 seconds to go here in the first half. No score. Really not close to a score so far today. Well, Oregon State's game plan to play defense has got to be featuring Oregon State's offense doing something. Controlling the ball. Possessing the ball. They haven't done it today like I expected. I think they will in the second half. Jitter time's over, Jimmy. Ball at the 42. And Shields loses. Back to the 40, and once again, there's a penalty flag. The tackle by Tyrone Williams. I think Tyrone Williams jumped. Um, he took off with the motion, and I think the left defensive end was in Oregon State's backfield before the ball was ever snapped. He's fast, but he isn't that fast. You got it. Hit it right on the head. Repeat first Another penalty against Wyoming. That is their seventh of the afternoon. Is that right? That's five yards and stops the clock. That's perfect for Oregon State. 50 yards and penalties so far. Levied against Wyoming. 
First down and five for the Beavers. Ball at the 46-yard line of Oregon State. Shields, good protection. And knocked away. Fine play by Wahe Constance. Oregon State and Ian Shields in particular have run the two-minute drill very well in practice this year. They got a third and five situation, a second and five situation here. That's open season. They can run the ball. They can spread people out and do that from, from that formation. Um, they can throw the ball. They got a trip situation here. Second down and five. Shields faking, faking, and gets close to that first down stake. Joe Cummings pursuing. Clock shows 40 seconds to go. Clock stopped now. Coaches on the far sideline are having a little bit of trouble with Thomas Williams. He's doing a lot of jawing with the referee and taking himself out of the game, asking for a hold call. Three plays in a row, and the coaches were all out on the field. Should have been penalized talking to him after the last Big down. third down for the Beavers, third and one. Last year, the Beavers only converted 28% of those opportunities. Uh, fumble. And Wyoming has recovered. 35 seconds to go. Kenny Johnson has come up with a football for Wyoming. It's like a mishandle between the quarterback and fullback again. And again, it looked the like the same play we saw earlier where one went the opposite. No, that one's right. Just a guard too deep and banging into the quarterback's arm, it looked like. Fullback never got the ball and certainly had a hole there. Would have had a five or six yard gain. All right, it's first down in 10 at the 44 yard line of Wyoming. Incomplete. The nearest man to the ball was Brent Tillman, a sophomore from Pueblo, California. He was out almost the entire season last year. I think he played in two games. He had to separate a shoulder. And he was the starter today at wide receiver. So it'll be second down and 10. That stops the clock with 31 seconds showing. Oregon State needs to play a good, solid series here. Get out of the half. Nothing, nothing. They haven't generated much offense, but their defensive team has played one heck of a football game so far. Cowboys on second and 10 at the 43. It is incomplete. Pratt, the intended receiver, and Elahi coming up quick. You gotta like Buster Elahi. You certainly do. As I mentioned, he's one of the eight Texans playing this year. I don't uh, think he knows he's a freshman, Jimmy. Boy, the staff here is really high on this freshman crop. A lot, of, a couple of them redshirting, and as we said, eight are playing from Texas. Third down and ten. This is Damon Turner. Gets to the 49 yard, almost to the 50. With 18 seconds to go, the clock is running. Detanyan Myers makes the stop for Oregon State. Clock continues to run. Was that, uh, they aren't, they aren't gonna call timeout, no? Apparently not, they're gonna let the clock run out. Was Four seconds. To me, was that Detanyan Myers? I yes, was it curious. was. I didn't think he was gonna play today. According to my spotter, that's who it was. Now it's to Tanya Myers. Well, that is the end of the first half of play in Laramie. There is no score in the game. Not a particularly well-played offensive game for either side. No score after one half here in Laramie. Well, I think Oregon State's defense, particularly the calls from Rocky Long, the way they've been executed, has, has been fabulous today. Taken Wyoming by surprise with this three-man front. Uh, with Oregon State's strength, their linebackers. All right, let's go downstairs to David uh, with Jerry Pettibone. Coach Pettibone, a real defensive ball game this first half, no score. Well, it's it is it's exactly what it is. It's a it's a field position game. Uh, both uh, both defenses are doing an excellent job, and uh, in the difference in the game has been uh, in the kicking game. Uh, and our, our our punt team has done a, a, a real good job of uh, punting the ball, keeping the ball deep, and uh, and our defense is doing a, a super job of of uh, creating uh, big plays in critical situations. And but what we're going to have to do uh, offensively is to analyze how uh, Wyoming is defending us and settle down and execute our offense. We're having a, a problem with some uh, ball handling on just a straight uh, 
trap play uh, up the middle and uh, and settle the, the youngsters down and uh, execute the offense the way uh, they're capable of, and uh, we should be okay the second half. Good luck in the second half, right. Coach. Back up to you guys. No score in the first half of play, and we'll be back with halftime highlights and statistics right after this. It's halftime in sunny Laramie, Wyoming. There is no score here at War Memorial Stadium. To say it was a defensive game, that's uh, the least you can say. A very defensive first half of play so far. Only 131 uh, total yards, both teams combined. Absolutely. I, I would have expected just the other kind of game. As you know, I thought Oregon State had scored 28 to 35 points. I thought Wyoming would score and get the ball in the air and have great success. This 3-4 of Oregon State has done an excellent job. And personally on offense, I think Oregon State has hurt themselves with some penalties, just haven't quite gotten the execution, not uh, doing real well with the footing. And I look for the jitters to kind of leave the second half, and we'll see a lot better offensive game from both sides in the second half, and a lot better adjustments, I think, uh, from Wyoming offensively to Oregon State's five, six, seven, eight men that they're sending. Yeah. Well, it has been a defensive struggle, no question, so we're going to look at some highlights that reflect the defensive nature of the game. Well, this is the, this is the highlight right here. Ian Shields going back to pass. I might point out, I believe Oregon State's called 12, 13 passes so far. Ian didn't have anybody open, so he brought the ball back to the line of scrimmage. That's what he has to do. He didn't put it up in the air. On the other side of the ball, Oregon State, every time they've seen a bootleg, as this play is, Brought people from both sides. Michael Hale knocks it loose. Did a big play out of number one here, the big guy. Outside linebacker, and he runs it down the sideline. He's going to get a lot of grief for not scoring on that one. But again, that's how Oregon State's playing today defensively. The stats in the first half are a strong reflection of a defensive game. Oregon State did have more possession time. But look at the first downs. Only eight first downs total. I would not have expected that, nor do I expect it second half. I do expect Oregon State to control the ball this half and score some points. All right, that's one half of play behind us. We look forward to the second half, and we'll be back right after this. You're watching Oregon State Beaver football on Prime Sports Northwest. Welcome back to War Memorial Stadium in Laramie, Wyoming. I'm Jimmy Jones, along with Steve Priest and David Endress. No score after a strong defensive first half of play here in Laramie, but a second half yet to go. The total yardage, total offense, I should say, for Oregon State in that first half, only 59 yards, 72 for Wyoming. And the rushing yardage total, 46 yards for the Beavers, and last year, they led the Pac-10 conference in rushing at 131.8 points a game. Oof. I wouldn't have guessed this. Um, I believe that Oregon State will come back in the second half and put some numbers up offensively. I also expect to see Wyoming go to a much more controlled offense, um, get rid of some of the multi-receiver multi, uh, sets that they've shown, go back to a maximum protection, and just try to get the ball out to Mike Jones, the tight end, 81 Mike Jones and to Yarborough, see if they can run with the ball and get some protection for this quarterback. I do expect to see some points. Wyoming, of course, playing in the WAC conference, and the preseason to win it all in the WAC is Fresno State, and that is next week's opponent for Oregon State. Fresno State at Fresno State. First three games for Oregon State played on the road this year. That hasn't happened in a while. Jimmy, we got Brooke Knight kicking, who just walked in from the baseball team, and kicking the ball for the Beavers. Got all these interesting kickoff formations at Oregon State. Brooke Knight, number 12, 5'9", 180 pound junior. Moves into the ball. Thrown back in the end zone, a yard deep to the 10. Gets to the 19 yard line, where it'll be first down and 10 for Wyoming. Tackle for the Beavers made by J.D. Stewart. So now Wyoming will go first down and 10. They had seven penalties in that first half of play. Oregon State had their problems as well. They had five. Well, Oregon State didn't have uh, a lot of sacks last year. I think 18 for the season. 
I remember correctly, and this seems like they've got half that many today, or at least hurries. Really a pressure defense. Ball right at the 20 yard line. Christofferson, who ran very well in the first half, breaking tackles. He's a good, strong runner, 223 pound junior. He was an academic All American in the WAC Conference last year. He gained 33 yards, their leading rusher in the first half of play. Dennis Edwards makes the stop for Oregon State. Oh, you don't see very much there. Six for 18 for Joe Hughes, 39 yards. Not the prolific pass offense we've seen. Christofferson did have a good, good half, 5.5, and Yarborough, of course, only two receptions. Look for him to get six or eight before the day's over. Nine-yard gain by Christofferson makes it second down and one at the 29-yard line. That again is Christofferson, and he has the first down and then some. And once again, it's Dennis Edwards, a young man who was really plagued by injuries last year and has played a lot of positions for the Beavers. He makes the tackle, and it'll be another first down for Wyoming. Always a starter. See Dennis there. He's a great physical specimen, and quite frankly, he could, he could go on to the next level, particularly at this position. He's got very good speed, very strong. Ball at the 35, first down for Wyoming. Mike Jones going in motion. This is Turner. Gets a couple. Tackle there by Chad DeSully. He's been a very consistent player for Oregon State. This is his fourth year as a starter. Senior from Hillsboro. Not very impressive. You look at first half possessions here for the Cowboys. All punts and it just, uh, you don't see much. One 30-yard drive. And nothing spectacular. Oregon State needs to stop him right here. Second down and eight, and Yarborough goes to the bottom of your screen. Audible at the line of scrimmage. He was under a rush. It's batted down. I think that was DeSully. Boy. I think that was Chad DeSully who got up and swatted it away. Well, Chad's had a very good fall camp. He is a four-year starter former linebacker he's really put some pounds on get the audible right there Joe Hughes trying to take advantage of a one on one and he's got the man out there and Chad just gets up I see so far tremendous improvement in this defensive line which to me has been the biggest question mark that Oregon State has going into to, to the fall season third down and eight the Arborough sets to the top of your screen now just in time and it's Overthrown intended for Yarborough, and Reggie Tung was the cover man for Oregon State. Had a shot at picking it off. So that brings up fourth down, and the folks will put it away. Well, Joe Hughes has seen Beavers in his face all day, and take a look at that. Look at the great effort right there by either Petrini or Corey Hewitt coming right up the middle. And again, excellent coverage by Reggie Tung. Oregon State isn't deep in that secondary, but for six or seven guys, they can play. Brian Gregert will put it. Average 42 yards per punt, 42 and a half actually, in the first half. I'd like to see the Beavers go for the ball here. Oh, well, they were. Oh. They certainly were. But there's a whistle. Darn it. This guy's lined up at 10 to 12 yards, and the snapper isn't great, and neither is the kicker's timing. That's a delay call against Wyoming to move the ball back now to the 32 yard line. Oregon State's got some real quick people. J.J. Young, it looks like, is out here. Isn't that J.J. or is that Chris Royal? That's J.J. 11 yards deep. Nice kick. Fair catch called for. Well, seeing it in the sun, Douglas shading his eyes back there, but wraps it up at the 30-yard line. So the Beavers will start first down and 10, and they've got a ways to go. Beaver offense in the first half, only 46 yards rushing, as we mentioned. They had five penalties in the first half, and we mentioned the Beavers, the second least penalized team in the conference last year. Well, those go hand in hand. You can't be a penalized team, five in the first half, for instance, and run Oregon State's offense. Five yards hurts you too bad. So look for the Beavers to tighten it down. First down and 10. Nice option. Nice option. J.J. Young turns the corner, gets five or six. They'll spot it at the 35-yard line. That he option. He was tackled by 
Wade Constance. That option for Oregon State ought to be as comfortable as an off-tackle play for most teams. That four or five yards is an automatic for the Bees. Take a look at the Oregon State side of it. Two for eight, plus about three or four more calls. That's more passes than normally are called by the Oregon State Beavers, or at least for last season. Nothing real impressive. Only 38 yards per game average in passing. Tight ends haven't caught a pass in two years. And a whistle blows the play dead. Now, I'll tell you, Jimmy, if we get a shot at this, Wyoming is trying to stop Oregon State's option by bringing the cornerback to make Ian Shields pass, or to, to make yards, it pitch. On the offense. You see another offensive penalty. Repeat second down. If they do that, they are coming with a safety from the inside to take the pitch man. And J.J. Young, Cameron Reynolds, Chad Paulson, if they get outside with that guy and a quick pitch from Ian that isn't strung out, it's six points. Ian makes that pitch quickly right there, and there's a real good 50-50 or better chance that Oregon State gets a touchdown out of it. Second out and 10 for the Beavers. Ball at the 30. He went to the wrong side. That's Chad Paulson. It's close to the 34-yard line where Joe Cummings wraps him up. <laughs> Lots of punts on that side, too. Oregon State did have a couple of three drives where they got first down yardage. Always the penalty stopped them that first half. And had one big fumble down at the end of the first half of play. Second down and six. Or third down and six, rather. And they got a play to the other side of the field. Right here. Shields on the pitch to Paulson, and he comes up short of the first down. Rob Levin moved quickly to Paulson and made a fine stop. Number five, Rob Levin. What an outstanding first half of play back then. Watch this. Ian gets to the outside. Again, you'll see the inside safety's taking the pitch man. See that? That just can't happen. Oregon State, one more step, and they're going to score on that. Ian needs to get the ball to him a little bit quicker by just driving harder at the pitch man. Colas to punt it. He gets it away in time. It's very low, however. And that's very returnable. Prentice Roan gathers it in at the 15. And back across the 35-yard line, and down he goes, short of the 40. Tackled by Tony Hewitt. And this guy's got some speed and a great instinct as to how to run back punts. If we take a look at him, he just sets it up. Take a look at the, him catch the ball, and just no big hurry. Sets it up. Now he darts to the outside. Wow, what a shot on Rico Petrini. Herschel Curry trying to maintain leverage. Mark Dickeroff was in on that stop for the Beavers. First down and 10. Cowpokes with the ball on their own 38-yard line. Audible here. Yep, taking a long time. There's that two-step drop again. Incomplete. Oh, Great coverage across the way by Jackal, uh, by uh, Tony oh, Obilovich. Don't say that <laughs> on the air, Jimmy. <laughs> Tony Obilovich, one of the captains of this club. They're trying to audible every time they see the tight end on the weak side of the formation as with no wide receivers. Tight end covered by a linebacker. They're trying to audible and go the quick out. Tony Obilovich and Dennis or Edwards are just doing an excellent job. Second down and ten. Turner. Dragging a couple of tacklers. A nice piece of running by Turner. Stopped by William Ephraim. Ephraim with five career pass interceptions. Honorable Benson, all Pac-10 team. Take a look at this, Jimmy. If it's a lead play or a quick hitter, Wyoming has success. Every time they've run it, it seemed to be successful, yet they come back with slow developing plays, the sweep and the, the draw that just have not worked. Third down conversion time for the Cowboys. Had no luck in that first half. Christofferson slides outside. I don't know. I don't think he got it. It'll be close. 
Looks like the official's going to spot him up there an extra half a foot. Natanian Myers on the tackle for Oregon State. Now we'll get a look at where they spot the ball. Very close to the first down. Now as we look, it is a first down. Yes, indeed. Now they got the benefit of the spot. It's just shy of the 50 at the 49. So another first down for Wyoming. I'm Wyoming in the first half with only five first downs. I'm surprised they have not tried to air the ball out. Just uh, keep everybody in and let Ryan Yarbrough go for it. If he's going to, I believe they'll try it right over here with Herschel. Oregon State looks like they're going to send everybody, so let's see if we get it right here. It was enough time to release, and the tight end, Mike Jones, was, the ball was thrown behind him. Whoa. Packy Ina and Corey Hewitt just labeled the, the guy. Lots of hurries out there today. And Joe Hughes has done an excellent job at just getting rid of the ball. There are four or five sacks that he has saved by just quick feet and good thinking. Second down for the Cowboys. In the audible, here's the Max Protect. Bearing it out now, and caught by Yarborough, and there's exactly what you were talking about a moment ago. They go deep to Yarborough, and he scores. Well, they have to see it coming. They brought their people in for Max Protection. Herschel had him where he wanted him. We get to see it. It looks like he has him exactly where he wants and then just doesn't quite squeeze him. Take a look here. They bring everybody in. Maximum protection, three-step drop. The man just takes off on a fly pattern. Chris Mimlin will attempt the point after touchdown here in a moment. I the think number one active receiver in the NCAA. The kick by Mimlin is good. And with 9.56 to go in the third quarter, Wyoming is on the scoreboard. It's 7-0 Cowboys. Can we get a shot of that again? Well, it's appropriate that Ryan Yarborough scored the first touchdown for Wyoming today on a wonderful reception and run. Take another look. You can't blitz it because it's too short a drop. Now, right here. Herschel Curry has to put his head down and run. You cannot, as a defensive back, turn back and look for the ball until you see the receiver's hands go up. It puts you off balance. Right there, if anything's a problem in that situation, you just keep running and make the tackle. Don't look back. Big day for Yarborough country, or big career for Yarborough country. Now Oregon State's got some pressure on him to score. Paulson receives at the 15. Waits for a block. Short of the 25. Tackle by Marcus Harris. Here's a look at scoring drive. Five plays. They went 62 yards in just a minute 22. And the big play, of course, a long touchdown pass to Yarborough. 51 yards. Well, when you play a team like this, like Wyoming, you've got to expect Yarborough and Hughes are going to complete one bomb at least. So you have to plan on scoring 21, 28 points to win it. Boy, when you look at all the numbers by Ryan Yarborough, it is staggering. Mm -hmm. Yet they just about had to print a separate media guide <laughs> for Ryan Yarborough. First team All-Conference, first Outside, team All-America. On the kicking team, five-yard penalty, re-kick. So we'll kick it all over again. Well, Oregon State's got a very good kickoff receiving team. They ought to get more yardage than that. Uh, then that last kickoff out of this team. It was mistimed. Chad was right up in the middle of the wedge before the wedge ever moved. And that's, uh, that's a situation of poor timing. Forget the blocks. You know, it's interesting, Steve, that these Oregon State players and their dedication, 50 of them stayed in Corvallis all summer. They grew very close together. and They uh, worked out, lifted weights. They want to win. They're tired of these losing teams. Well, they are close together, and, and this is a better team offensively than they've shown today. They need to pick up the tempo right here. These kids are better than this. They outsize them. They outspeed them as far as Wyoming's concerned, and they ought to score some points. 
short kick this time. Young takes it at the 10. Close to the 30, about the 28-29 yard line. No, oh, a good return by J.J. Young. You see this youth again. Even though Oregon State has moved along in, in Coach Pettibone's program, you still got way more freshmen and sophomores than anything else. Most of the juniors on the team now are now playing, uh, but they are still holdovers from the previous regime for the most part. Jerry Pettibone in his third year at Oregon State, 2-19-1. and one. Impressive win last year over Fresno State and perhaps an even more impressive tie against Arizona. Pass interference. Good bump right there. It was Chris Cross, the intended receiver, but I don't see a play. It was Prentice Roan on the coverage. They actually gave Chris, you see Chris uh, after the play demanding it. If we do get a shot at it, you'll see a pretty good bump. Play pass. It's out of the uh, five-step drop off the triple option. Good pass protection. Ian puts it out there. It's over the head of the free safety. There was already a bump. It had gone by be before that where Roan caught up to him. Second down and 10 for the Beavers at their 39. Ian Shields got a little room this time. Pitches at the oh. last second as he was hit. And that's a first down chalked up by Paulson. He's finally stopped by Kenny Johnson. Wasn't really stopped, just bumped out of bounds. We got a hold on the backside. No. Really too bad. This is too bad. This You had... Uh, either Ty or Thomas Williams complaining the whole game about the holding and I think they just absolutely talked an official into it. It was backside tackle sealing off, I believe. Big play for Oregon State. Ian Shields did an excellent job of running the option that time. Started down the line, forced off the line, but continued to run the play. Turned the ball loose at the end of the play. Turned out to be a big gainer. So now it's long yardage, second down and 20 for Oregon State, and the ball is marked at the 13-yard line. Come here. The option again, shields across the 20, the 21-yard line, where he's tackled by Wadi Constance. Take a look at that penalty that occurred a moment ago. One of so many penalties today. Well, take a look at this again. It's on the right side, and there's just a tackle. Yep. It looked like a lie. It was a lie. The right guard for Oregon State just tackled the pursuit. Pretty good tackle, too. Yeah, well, well he played defense last year, Jimmy. He learned something while he's been here. Third down, 18 for the Beavers, trailing the Cowboys 7 to nothing with 8.52 to play in the third quarter here at Laramie. Quick kick. Paulson gets it away, and it's out of bounds around the 40-yard line. Well, that's the first surprise we see today. Well, the offensive lineman, I believe, about got a surprise with the ball right on his posterior. That would have been a much better play if Chad Paulson hadn't have had to reload and kick it high at the end. If we get a replay on it, you'll see the kicker actually have to take a, a kind of a jostle step and change the direction. Now let's see here. He pitches it. Somebody comes back. It's the halfback. See right there in front of him. Doesn't allow Chad to get his foot into the ball. First down and 10 for the Cowboys. Ryan Christofferson. Oh, he has had an excellent day today. He crosses the 54 Wyoming to the 49 where Buster Elihi, a very impressive true freshman today, makes a tackle for Oregon State. They'll spot the ball at the 49-yard line. Well, here's where Oregon State needs some of this leadership. Tony Abilovich, Herschel Curry, some of the older players, Michael Hale, William Ephraim have got to get in it and not let something happen again quickly. Christofferson logs five yards, so it's second and five. He gets the call again. Huge hole for Christofferson. Dragged down by Curry just outside the 30-yard line. Big, big hole for Ryan Christofferson, who had 33 yards gained in the first half. Average 4.3 yards a game last year. Well, this is a, a slow, delayed play. It's a counter trap. He just uh, picks his hole and runs it. Oregon State's got to get their team together. This is something you do on the field. 
the Beavers actually look like they're a little slow getting ready for these plays as opposed to what they were in the first half. There's Christofferson, and you see the yards he's picked off today. He's been the, certainly been the most effective running back on the field. And this is Turner, stopped by Mark Schultz. By the way, Ryan Yarborough's 50-yard reception for a touchdown uh, a few minutes ago was his 12th reception of 50 or more yards in his career. Wow. Just one of the one of the many impressive well, all records for Ryan Yarborough. All three of the running plays in this series have been counter traps where they start the back one way and he comes back the other side past Oregon State's pursuit, taking advantage of the quick pursuit on the Beavers' defense. Oh, Christofferson can't hold it. Ephraim with a strong hit. Pretty good thump for a 160-pounder. William Ephraim. Here comes the Beaver Blitz. Hughes unloads it, and uh, take a look at William's shot on him here. Nice play. So that puts the ball at the 29-yard line. Third down and eight. Now Richard Peace is into the game now, a wide receiver, normally the starting wide receiver, and he's set to the top of your screen. An empty backfield. Hughes gets it away in time, complete to Christopherson. And he certainly is in the workhorse of this offense today for Wyoming. He has another first down, tackled by Herschel Curry. Ball at the 15 of Oregon State. Take a look at that. Just coming to the back side. A little swing and again, wrap people up. There's a nice tackle by Herschel Curry. Missed a couple in the first half. He did come back and wrap him up, save a touchdown right there. Now he is a strong runner. He was the weightlifter of the year for the Cowboys last year. First down and 10 at the 15 of Oregon State. Cowboys leading it 7-0. Blue Rivers. Nowhere to go. Big play needed and big play assist right there from Michael Hale. Way to stay home. Now that was Wayman Livingston, the ball carrier, and Michael Hale on the tackle. Watch it. Well, Oregon State now needs to stop this and shut them out, not give up anything more than three. Second down and 19. Ball at the 24. Plenty of time to throw. A slant pattern right over the middle, and it is complete for short yardage. Mike Jones, the tight end with the reception. One of two Mike Joneses, as we mentioned earlier on this team. 238-pound senior from South Dakota. Dennis Edwards on the tackle for Oregon State. All just nudging up to the 20-yard line. Well, we haven't seen the max protection since the touchdown. And I don't know why not. I'd be right back at it. They can only run it once this game for six. Third down and 15 for the Cowboys. Right to Yarborough. There's the Point play, deep. Jimmy. Curry in front, and there was no chance for Yarborough to make that catch. Beautifully played by Herschel Curry. Now, as poorly as he played the other long pass, he played this one very well. If we get a look at it, he's running with the man. He's not looking back. You'll watch him. He's running. He's right there. He's got him pinned on the sideline. That's an excellent job. Whole different kind of defense than the prior touchdown. Nice play, Herschel Curry. So Wyoming will attempt the field goal. Field goal kicker is Chris Mindland. His long last year was 51 yards. It's good. And Wyoming tacks three more on the scoreboard. And they lead it 10 to nothing with 5.01 to go in the third quarter. Here's another look at that field goal, a 37-yarder by Chris Mindland. Nice hold here. Take oh. a look, it bounces back, gets it up. Actually got the ball turned, too. Rolled it back there on the ground. Nice job by the holder, got the strings around. 
Oregon State needs something out of a kickoff and a drive right here. They've got to turn the, the field position around. The arrow hasn't been the Beavers' way since the first quarter. Angling to Paulson at the 20. It takes four Cowboys to bring him down at the 22, led by Taylor Sorensen. David Endress standing by on the sideline. David, what do you got? Uh, guys, a lot of similarities to these two programs. Coach Tiller in his third season, Coach Pettibone in his third season, but not only that, they're both celebrating the 100 years of their football program. Kind of ironic on this opening game. For well, one thing that isn't similar is that uh, Coach Tiller took over after a Copper Bowl year and Jerry took over after 22 years of losing football. So. First down at the 22 for the Beavers, down 10 nothing now. Deals on the keeper gets about four, where he's tackled by Kenny Johnson. Here's a scoring drive for Wyoming. They keep it for nine plays, go 37 yards on the field goal in a period of under four minutes, three point uh, 37. And most of those yards on what appeared to be a counter trap back against the backbone of Oregon State's pursuit. Good call by Wyoming's staff. Second down and eight. Jason Barry to about the 27, going straight ahead where he's met by John Burrow. He had the most tackles for loss last year for, for Wyoming, and it amounted to 40 yards. Jason Barry, the ball carrier, a junior from Portland. Good speed. Good look at Jason. He's really worked with the talent Oregon State has at the halfback position. These kids have all gotten better. Really worked out hard, and in fact, at every position, the competition is really bringing out the best in these boys. Beavers need to get a drive going. It's third down and five now, and Ian Shields will take a timeout. And we'll take a timeout as well. 10-0 Wyoming leads with 3.37 to go in the third quarter. Ten nothing Wyoming here in Laramie with 3.37 to play in the third quarter. Quarterback Doug Nussmeyer and tailback Sheridan May lead a potent Idaho Vandal offense against Stephen F. Austin University. And you can catch the action Tuesday evening at 7 right here on Prime Sports Northwest. Big play for the Beavers, third down and five at their 27. Now the pitch might have it. Where's I think he came up just short. Where's the mark? He's got it. Excellent. If we get to see this again, I want you to take a look at the inside pitch again. It, it makes it, it's a difficult angle. It's very difficult to see. Ian does an excellent job of executing it, and this is how it's taught. He pitches with his right hand. It makes it very, very much of a concern as to someone knocking it down. Needs to switch that hand, and what an excellent job going for it right there, Cam Reynolds. Beautiful. Cameron Reynolds, a sophomore from Lake Oswego. He had his first start in high school at the age of 13. Way a too, couple of yards. Way too great a penetration right there. I think that was Thomas Williams, maybe Ty. It just penetrated like there wasn't an offensive guard. That was the first third down conversion of the game for Oregon State. They are one of 12. You see the options that are run by Division I teams, Air Force, Hawaii, both in this conference. Last year, those two teams went for over 320 yards each. Second down and seven for the Beavers. Jason Barry rams to the 49. All right. Wade Constantin the stop. He was their most improved defensive player in spring practice. Now they've got some things going. It's a triple option. Good read by Ian. Outside. Nice block on the outside. I think that was said by Cam Reynolds. And here's Jason just taking it to people. Ooh. Headache. Now throw the ball, Beavers. First down right and here. 10 at the 48 of Oregon State. Again. Oh my. 
And that's Jason Barry again getting to about the 45-yard line on a last-minute pitch. Joe Cummings comes up to make the tackle. Well, it was an excellent job by Ian, but again, he's making that very difficult and it's very dangerous because the ball's coming from inside out. Take a look at this. When you're open, okay, run at the outside shoulder of that guy and pitch it right there. He made up his mind. Ian actually got bailed out there by the guy hitting him low. He made up his mind to keep it, didn't read the defense. That'll be second down and four for the Beavers. And we have a timeout taken by the Cowboys. Second down and four when we return. 10 nothing Cowboys and the Beavers driving. This program is authorized under television rights granted by Oregon State University. Any publication, reproduction, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Prime Sports Northwest is prohibited. Now time winding down here in the third quarter. Beavers would like to get on the scoreboard. They're into Wyoming territory at the 46. 10-0, Cowboys on top. Oregon State operating with the biggest offensive line ever in Beaver history. They average from tackle to tackle 286 pounds. There's three of them, over 300 on that, among the offensive linemen. This is the first time that Oregon State has been in Wyoming territory. J.D. Stewart, very close to that first down marker. He's met by Corey Talich and Mark Brook. Well, this is a Tonga connection that we talked about at the start. Starling Latu, Johnny Fenga, and Eli Kalanuvalu. Big boys, Starling 295, Fenga 302, and Kalanuvalu 285. Third down a yard. Beavers need to keep this drive going, trailing 10-0. Right there. They get the first down. Ian Shields dives across the 40. Nice. Ryan Folsom got him around the ankle. Nice play by Ian Shields right there. He read it. He was outside quickly. Strung it out. If you notice, he'll string this out a little bit. When you got a yard to go, you make your fake right there. Okay, there's the good block. Now take it right at the guy. Take it right at 27 and pitch off 27 or else turn it up. Good job by Ian right there. First down for Oregon State. Throw the pass. Nope. Oh, tipped away and intercepted. Get over there, boys. That's Prudis Roan. You know what he can do. Knocked down at the 30-yard line. Pass by Cameron Reynolds. Intercepted. A tip ball intercepted. It was tipped by Wade Constance and collected by Prentiss Rome. Well, a little bit more of an actor there by Cam. He's got to take the ball and keep it down a little bit, run it out a little instead of bringing it up quickly. And then the Beavers got to go over and make the tackle. Great Constance. There, look at that. Ian Shields. This is tough, how tough he is. Boy, the pass was pretty darn close. A nice play by Constance coming back. So Wyoming goes first down and 10. Beavers need to stop this Chris right Christofferson now. doesn't get it. Does not get back to the line of scrimmage. Now Tackled that, by Dennis Edwards. If that's a hold, the Beavers need to match him back another 10 yards and start playing this position. Plenty of time left in this game for Oregon State to drive for two or three touchdowns. Minute 22 to go in the third. Not a lot of people here at this game All right. today. Take them back, Oregon State. Awaiting the call and the penalty. I mentioned there's not a lot of folks here at the game. And we understand that uh, it's because of the weather. The weather's too nice. People <laughs> want to go hunting and fishing or get out and go swimming. Well, I don't see too many houses. <laughs> A lot of barren plain, in our view. Oregon State needs a big, big play here. Wyoming's done an excellent job of protection this second half, primarily because they've run the ball very well. 
taking some of that zing out of those linebackers at Oregon State. First down in 10 at the 21-yard line for Wyoming. Beavers with the three down linemen. Here's the rush on Hughes. He just does get it away. That's a fumble. That's Mike a fumble. Jones, but that's a fumble. And Wyoming recovers. Dennis Edwards on the coverage. And Wyoming has recovered the fumble. They got a break there. Take a look at this. Completely empty, and the backs are just a step sh slow again. And Dennis makes the play. It's a fumble. What? Just not the luck. Beavers' first down right there would have been a huge play at this point in time. That was Steve Cyphers coming up with the football. Their offensive right tackle. Second down and 15 for Wyoming. Here's the completion over the middle to Pratt. He's dropped at the 30. Well short of the first down. Dropped by Herschel Curry. Reggie Tongue in on the play. Now let's see. It'll be spotted at just outside the 30. So they need 10 yards. Third down and 10. And they won't get it off in this quarter. That's the end of the third quarter in Laramie. And Wyoming on top. 10 to nothing. We're back to Laramie. 10-0, Wyoming leading. Wyoming ball, third down and 10. They lacked execution on third down conversion plays last year, and they're doing it again today as that ball is well over the head of Yarborough. Reggie Tongue and Michael Hale covering for Oregon State. Well, Oregon State, rather, uh, Wyoming now, 3 of 11 on third down conversions. Create a big play. Right here is where somebody needs to step up. Either a great run on the punt return or a, a kick block. Looks like Oregon State's in the return unless they sneak somebody through the middle. Joe Douglas waits at his 25. Douglas, a red shirt freshman. Short kick this time. Fair catch called for by Douglas. And it is taken at the 27 yard line. So, Oregon State with an opportunity now, their first offensive possession in the fourth quarter of play. The attendance we were talking about, there's not a lot of folks here today. The attendance is 22-9-23. You see Jerry Pettibone there awaiting this offense that has looked so good in fall camp to turn it loose. And I, I think the Beavers have got to start throwing the ball a little. They haven't thrown it all in the second half. Mark Alford. Last year's quarterback in at wide receiver now set to the top of your screen. Excellent strong running by Cedric Thomas. 229 pound sophomore. Now there's a kid who's changed his life. He was a quarterback, true freshman quarterback, three years ago. Sat out his redshirt year last year and now he's back as a fullback. And what a stud. He's kind of gone from a young gentleman to a sculpted <laughs> Sculpted, tough cookie. He, he had a nice 20-yard touchdown run in that last scrimmage before the start of the season. Second down and less than a yard for the Beavers. Thomas again, he has the first down close to the 40-yard line. He's tackled by Scott Monroe, his first tackle of the game. He's another Northwesterner, a, a freshman from Bellevue, Washington. The ball laid down right at the 40. Oregon State's now been seven quarters without a touchdown. Much too long. Thomas, Paulson, and Young, the backfield for Oregon State on first down. Fields in trouble. Down he goes. That was Brent Schieffer to make the tackle. When you get the option strung out like that, it's death to the offense. Take a look at this. It's the double option. Wyoming's doing an excellent job of just stringing it out. To tell you the truth, when Ian feels those three people outside, he's better off just cutting up inside and trying to get a couple of yards. He's outmanned outside. They have leverage on him. Get up the field and get what you got, not a five-yard loss. Second down and long now for the Beavers. Second down and 15. Gets it away just in time. Overthrown and 
intended for J.J. Young. Prentice Roan was covering for Wyoming. Jerry Pettibone, his ninth year as a head coach. I, I think that was out of the uh, sprint set. If it is, he has a wide open outside. He's get, got to get outside, get squared up, put some pressure on the defense. There was nobody out here but a receiver, and the backside pressure got him. Third down, 16. That may be how he's taught to run that. You don't see too good a third down statistic from either side. Sack back at the 25. So the Beavers go backwards, and once again, it's Brent Schieffer that bursts through to make the stop. Schieffer was out this spring because of a back injury. He's looking awfully good today. Well, this is the screen. It's out of the sprint. Plenty of plenty of pressure and quite frankly it's just difficult to run a screen when you're not a passing team. Oregon State puts a couple of three men out on patterns. They're easily um, covered by the, the defensive scheme and uh, everybody else is looking for the short pass on the screen. Colas with a nice punt. Prentice Roan retreating to the 35 yard line. Changes his mind and goes the other way. It was a good decision. Fumble the football. Oof. I think the Beavers Oregon have Oregon State ball. It looks like Oregon State recovered the football. And we'll see if we can get when they clear away, see who that was. We that might have been Chad Paulson. I saw a flag go down at the last minute, too, as though somebody had a late hit or a personal foul. But that should come after the play. It was Chad Paulson who got the fumble. The fumble was recovered by Oregon State. We have a dead ball, personal foul on Oregon State. 15 yards, Oregon State ball, first and 10. Happened right at the point of the fumble. If we see that again, the official threw it, who was running in to, to check Chad Paulson. There's good move by Rowan. Now let's see the hit. Hits right there by to Sully and Brad Barcroft. There it is. Now let's see where the play is. Oh, he called that on Chad Paulson who was coming over the top of a pile. That is a rotten call, folks. But Paulson the, was in air. But the Beavers keep alive offensively. J.J. Young breaks one. J.J. Young with that great speed. First down, Beavers. J.J. Young clocked it 4-4. Take a look at this play. There's that counter. Counter's been very successful most of the day. And right now, I'd like to see Wyoming stop the counter before we come away from it at Oregon State. First down and 10. In Wyoming territory at the 45. Shields gets a good block. Hit hard, but he's got a gain of about six yards on the play Kenny Johnson makes the stop he won his job this last spring played in all 12 games last year but was just a part-time starter played well today Oregon State's got a good drive going here they need a touchdown or a field goal out of this heck Jimmy they need a touchdown Indeed right they do. now, Down they need a score in a big way. Ball at the 38-yard line of Wyoming. Cedric Thomas in at fullback. Okay. This is Thomas. Nice run. Nice piece of running by Thomas. Picks up the first down. Williams and Burrow make the stop for Wyoming. Cedric Thomas. A real Hulk in there at 229, only 511. I'll tell you who's a real Hulk. Tim Camp's playing a lot. He's a sophomore, 6'7, 290. Came in as a big skinny kid a couple of years ago. He looks like an NFL lineman now. Just a solid weight room performance. First down and 10 at the 31 yard line of Wyoming. Oh, beautiful job by Paulson. Comes across the 25. And the Beavers effective on the ground now. Joe Cummings. Makes a stop for my Wyoming. He's another fellow who was a part-time starter last year and has drawn the starting job this season. Advance of the football to the 25. That'll be second down and three. 
Oregon State's used quite a bit of Tim Camp at tackle, and John Garrett bumped out from right tackle to the end. Now it's back to a normal set with a normal tight end. Pitch it. Shields keeps it. Close to the first down. Stop by Joe Cummings. One more quick step, no hesitation, and pitch the ball. If Ian could get one more step instead of hesitating and just pitch right through that, out, that outside shoulder of the pitch man, Oregon State has some yardage out of this option. They get enough yardage for the first down. Now the ball will be spotted at the 21-yard line, and this is the deepest penetration for Oregon State. 10.06 to go on this one. First down and 10 Beavers at the 21 of the Cowboys. Momentum's gone to the Beavers right now if they can score. Now they've done it on the ground. Seals push deep. Well, the double Lost option has not... Five. Excuse me, Jimmy. The double option has not been successful for the Beavers today. Take a look at this. They're getting so much off that fullback fake, they need to stick there. The double is stringing it out, giving easy reads to those linebackers, and they're running with it. Get back to the triple option, get back to the counter. That's what brought you this last 40 yards. Another fine defensive play by Wade Constance. Second down and 13. Pitch it. Shields with some room. He'll have the... Oh, he pitches at the last second. Nice play by Ian Shields. Great play by Ian Shields as he pitches to J.J. Young, who is stopped by Kenny Johnson. Great play by Shields. Excellent blocking up front. If we get a look at this, nice fake there. Cedric takes a solid hit right there. Good job by the blocking back, Chad. And Ian just gets outside and runs it. Excellent relationship there. J.J. stays where he's supposed to be. Good job, Ian Shields. Good job, Chad Paulson blocking. Well, the coaching staff has heaped praise upon Shields this year, and there's one of the reasons why he makes some very good decisions. Chad Paulson driving inside the five. John Burrow and Tyrone Williams on the tackle for Wyoming. <laughs> Plenty of time to win this one for the Beavers. Threatening now with 8.51 to go in the game. The ball at the three. And again to the goal line. A touchdown, Beavers. All right. Well, the Beavers put one on the board. It's 10 to 6 with a point after touchdown coming up. Well, it's amazing when you don't have a penalty that you can move down the field so well, isn't it? Oregon State actually started out with a 15 yard penalty there and got it back on a great counter run by JJ. Excellent job by the offense. I'm sure that makes everybody feel a lot better. Doug Stuckey will attempt the point after touchdown. He's a freshman walk-on, 6 feet, 179 pounds. Ah. Oh, he misses it. Ah. Off to the right. Off to the right on the point after touchdown attempt. So Doug Stuckey's college career starts out 0 for 1. But the, Cowboys, but the uh, Beavers do get six on the board. We'll take another look at the touchdown blast by Chad Paulson. Uh, first two, here's one after touchdown. Here's the miss. It looks like everything's fine. Like a golfer. Just looks up and doesn't finish it. Hit the goalpost. Now here's the touchdown run. Just a lead play right here. Nice blocking. Good surge by the offensive line. Oregon State's got to score to win anyway. Score a touchdown to win. Absolutely. Last year, Paulson gained 381 yards on the ground, averaging just under five yards a carry and scored once. Stucky, you can imagine the way he's feeling right now. Well, it's a heck of a way to start your game, a true freshman, your college career. He seems to be a pretty confident kid. He's a soccer player. He's a, he's a punter. Seems to be quite a competitor. He'll be all right. Here's the scoring drive. Beavers went 64 yards in three minutes, 40 seconds. 
Cap by Paulson's plunge for the six points. Prentice Roan again is the deep return man for Wyoming, standing on the three. Good coverage right here, good field position. Received at the five, dropped by Roan, but he hits it up easily. Slips down as he crosses the 20. And they'll give Roan progress to about the 23-yard line. This field, like many turf fields, that is in a dry area where they're watering all the time, doesn't have a deep root system. Pulls up real easy. You've noticed six, eight people today falling down. Now Oregon State's got to put the clamps on it right here. First down, Cowboys leading at 10 to 6. Plenty of time left, 8 minutes, 25 seconds to go in the game. Christofferson, who's had his way all day long, comes across the 25, picks up about four. Let's go down to the field now and David Endress. You guys not a good start for Doug Stuckey on the extra point, but Oregon State really had a battle during the uh, fall ball to see who their place kicker was going to be. Their kicker last year, Jamie Burke, was playing professional baseball, so wasn't here for fall ball. He may be back, and after Stuckey kicked it, maybe he'll get the job back. All right, David, thank you. Second down and seven for the Cowboys at their 26. Christofferson again, Edwards forces the play. Good play by Edwards. And John Holmes, or rather Tom Holmes, coming in on the tackle for Oregon State. David mentioned the, the kicking competition. Even without Jamie Burke, they're from last year. They have some good people out there kicking the ball. And probably the best thing going right now at Oregon State is the competition level, the depth level. There are six or eight positions where guys are fighting for their job every week, and it just makes everybody better. Well, Oregon State has 36 of their top 44 from last year back. Third down and eight. It's caught, but not enough for a first down. Big play right there. Mike Jones with a reception, but he does not get the first down. Tony Bilovich on the tackle. Well, that's one big play right there. Fourth down, Oregon State's going to get the ball back, and if they ever needed a bad kick and a good return, this would be the spot for it. Plenty of 41 to go, and the clock is running. A touchdown by the Beavers, of course, will put them over. They can't tie it. They'll go ahead with a field goal. Yep. Joe Douglas, the lone return man. Go for the block here, Beavers. Get ahead to about the 48, where he's tackled by Joe Cummings. Cedric Thomas, a red shirt last year. He had an arthroscopic surgery on his knee, and I can't remember if that was last fall or early I this can't winter. either, Jimmy. I, I remember he did, but he's in marvelous shape. He's uh, really come back and decided he's going to compete for that fullback position. First down and 10 at the 48. There's a counter to Paulson. Oh, strong hit. Oh, that was Prentice Roan with the tackle. 5'8", 186 pounds. He's been featured mostly today as a return man. He hit a, hit a fine lick there. That counter has been unstopped so far today. That moves the ball. Let's see where they've got it. And no, they're going to move it back. Rolled away. Good try. Yeah. So it's at the 48. Second down for the Beavers, second down and six. Good call by Ian Shields right there. He let the official know that that official's picking the ball up at cost Oregon State probably five seconds, and they were very close. Good job. Yes, indeed. Real smart. There's a, a good example of Ian Shields head in the game. Shields came to Oregon State to play baseball in 90. Came out for football in 91. Full-time football now. Well, it's full-time job is his. He's earned it. Second down and six. Right there. 
J.J. Young has that speed to burn down the sideline. He's gone. J.J. Young will score. Yes, sir. Whew. Well, there's that speed we've been looking to see all the time J.J. Young has been at Oregon State, but he's had all those injuries, but he has snapped out of it at a brilliant run down the sideline by Young, and the Beavers go on top. Well, Jimmy, all day we've been saying get down the line of scrimmage quick and get rid of the ball, and they can't get there. They're trying to cover that with the safety from the inside. It's amazing to me that Oregon State hasn't had three or four of those today just like that. Nice job by Ian Shields. There's J.J. A lot easier to play than sit out the year. Now we'll see how Oregon State covers and how they play defense. Stucky. This time, no problem, right through the heart. And now, with 4.51 to play, the Beavers go on top, 13 to 10. Here's one last look at this touchdown run. Take a look at Ian, it's from directly behind him. It's a triple option, no, it's a double option. I've said it wouldn't work, and it has, folks. There it is, Ian gets out there quickly, release it. Look at Ian Shields, he went out and got a block, Jimmy. He pitched the ball and took the man out. Tell you, he does the intangibles. He'd love to have one more step on Ian's speed frame, but I'll tell you, not many people are doing what he can do for the Beavers right now. If you don't believe it, watch a quarterback chase people down and block them on his own option. 47-yard touchdown run by J.J. Young. 13-10. Six carries for 119 yards. What a way to start the season. Now, I don't want to jinx the Beavers, but if you remember that statistic that Cowan puts up, Oregon State has not lost in a game where they've had a 100-yard back in like seven or eight years. So let's see here. Big cover right here. Barone waits at the four. A convoy in front, and down he goes. Nice cover. Nice cover. Chris Royal on the tackle. Chris Royal, a, a backup wide receiver and a true freshman and another one of those great talents from, Houston, uh, from Texas. And he'll be playing a lot of football for Oregon State. He could play a couple of defensive back positions. He's, uh, he's actually challenging for the receiver position. Here's well, the ball game right here. Beavers need that stout defense again. And want to keep the clock running. Four minutes, 45 seconds to go. The Beavers First down at the 22 for Wyoming. They're singling up and going to go for it. Interesting. Hughes gets it away in time, but it's oh! up by Reggie Tung. Whoa! The 10 yard line, and Reggie Tung oh, will oh, score oh. on the pick. Well, the Beavers' oh, defense deserves it. This Beavers' defense deserves to end this game like this, folks. There's still plenty of time left for Wyoming to come back. Don't get me wrong, but if ever a team has won a football game. Oregon State's defense has done it today, Jimmy. 29 yards on the return by Reggie Tung. And my, how this game has turned in the last 60 seconds. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you it's turned, and you're going to see it again, but it's pressure on Joe Hughes that causes this interception. It's the same thing that the Beavers have done all day. Oh, my gosh, there's a flag down. Take a look. Look at the pressure. Boom, he had to get rid of it. There's a flag on the field. Well, you see Reggie taking it in for the touchdown. There's the touchdown, and I don't know what the call was, Jimmy. Illegal it's an celebration. Illegal celebration, right. Hey, this official doesn't know how long it's been. <laughs> oh, I like it. The 15 yard Let me write that down. Against Oregon State. <laughs> he he ought to see the press box. <laughs> Actually, you ought to see that group of people down there on about the five-yard line where they stuck Oregon State supporters. <laughs> so the kick will be made now from the 10. And then it's a 15-yard penalty on the kickoff. It is good. That kid looks pretty good, Jimmy, kicking that ball after a miss to start with. He came back and thumped those two. He didn't didn't take an easy swing at him. And he's only a freshman. Four minutes, 37 seconds to go in the game, and the Beavers have jumped on top. They doubled the score, the Cowboys, 20 to 10. And remember, Oregon State came into the game a 10-point underdog. We'll be back with the kickoff after this. First of all, 
Here's another look at the interception and the resulting touchdown run by Reggie Tung. And if you don't think Michael Hill caused this, number 34, he put his helmet right in Joe Hughes' face, and that's team defense. Michael Hale and one of the inside backers, I think it was actually Corey Hewitt, who almost got down for the for Reggie across the goal line. Those two people put tremendous pressure. This has been a team defense all day long, a great effort by the defensive line linebackers, the secondary. We were talking beforehand that you have to give Yarborough and Hughes a couple of touchdowns. You just have to figure on it, and the Beavers have held them to one so far. Reggie Tung, a redshirt halfback in 91, started seven games at cornerback last year and the starter this year, putting Igloo. Oregon State up 20 to 10. You know what his nickname is, Jimmy? Did you hear that? Igloo. He's from Hawaii, or uh, Hawaii, Alaska. <laughs> Hawaii? <laughs> Hawaii, no, he, he's You're too excited. You're he's from Alaska. He's a deep Igloo. <laughs> Here's a kickoff back at the 20-yard line. Uh, Roan, the 30. Don't give it up, folks. Heads into the middle, and there's a fine return by Prentice Rowe. They don't have his average for kickoff return today, but it has been considerable. Herschel Curry on the tackle. Well, see the Beavers decided to play that last quarter. There's lucky number 20. Now the Beavers need to stop right here. Make them at least earn any yardage they get. Four minutes, 31 seconds. Wyoming starting in Beaver territory at the 45. William Holland has come into the game for the first time at wide receiver. In and out of the hands of Ryan Yarborough. Folks. Ryan Yarborough, who has 2,845 yards in receptions and 26, 27 touchdowns. Reggie he, Tung again, he's man dropped. on the ball. He's dropped a couple of three today, and a lot of it's been coverage, but uh, you know, Ryan Yarbrough has been injured most of this camp, and he's missed a lot of days of practice. You see something like this, a senior doesn't make that kind of mistake, especially one who's caught that many balls. He just starts to run before he catches it. Watch. Second down, refused penalty there by the Beavers. Interesting at the end of that play, Jimmy, Reggie Tung was outside, forcing the man inside, Michael Hale, Coming from the inside, they didn't want to let Yarborough out of bounds. It's second down and 10 now. At the 45 on the incomplete pass. There's more pressure put on Hughes, and he'll go down. Hughes goes down. Dennis Edwards in on it. Dennis Edwards, who's had a fine game. Detanian Myers in there as well, but it was Dennis Edwards that caused the problem for Wyoming. Wow. Big play. I'll tell you, nothing like a, a defensive coordinator. He's lived this game bringing people. And I love to see what Rocky and his staff are doing right now. They're sticking with it. They rode this thing all the way, and they're going to be there. Long was a defensive coordinator here at Wyoming a few years back. And the whack player of the year is a quarterback. Third down and 18. Plenty of time to throw. Look out. <laughs> Ryan Yarborough with a great reception. My goodness. William Ephraim was the man he beat. And the Cowboys are right back in it. 52-yard touchdown pass from Hughes, who had a lot of time to set up and deliver. And Yarbrough with an excellent catch. Watch well, again. When we see this, they had plenty of time here. Max protect. Now take a look. We got a free safety here. I couldn't see who the free safety was, but there was a free safety in that situation. He simply got to get there. They kept the people back. Plenty of time, no pressure. And the free safety's got to get there. And Herschel, you can't undercut it. You just don't undercut that ball. They should go for two right here. Gives them a field goal type of win. Good 40, call. 43 yards and only two plays in less than a minute to get back on the board. 20 to 16. Beavers with a four-point advantage, so... Wyoming's going to have to score a touchdown if they want to pull this one out. You got hey, Jimmy, I haven't seen Oregon State playing with somebody deep, either in a zone or free safety, much all day today. The one time they did it, the one time they stayed back in long yardage and played conservatively, they had a couple of DBs who didn't stay deep. The toughest thing for a defensive back to do on a post pattern is not to undercut the ball. 
especially when you got a guy with Yarborough speed. Next week it'll be Northern Iowa. Let's go, Fox! For Wyoming. Jimmy, they're going to go for two. Yep. That's what I That'll put them within field goal range should they make it. There's plenty of time, actually, if they make this, to, to kick the ball deep to Oregon State, not onside kick it, stop them and get good field position. Beavers need a strong defensive effort on this one. Hughes will throw it. Into the end zone, complete to Mike Jones. So the two-point conversion is good as Hughes finds Mike Jones. I thought that the uh, motion man was going to the line of scrimmage. There is a penalty flag down. Yep, he there was. There is a penalty flag down on the far side. Well, the motion man looked like he was running towards the line of scrimmage as he went in motion. It's illegal procedure. All right, Beavers, you got a five-yard break. And you'll probably see the same play. Only, only they'll bring Yarborough in from the outside. He was open, too. Joe Hughes, 15th in the nation last year in total offense. Well, he's a fine quarterback. I've been pretty impressed with him because he has maintained his cool. He's had the kitchen sink thrown at him all day, and they're still in this ball game. Boy, he's had some great games. 400 yards, 68% throwing, and two touchdowns against BYU last year. The, the game's right over here. Jones outside. Yarborough. Ooh, baby. It's Ryan Yarborough, and he's dragged out. He won't go anywhere. That Michael Hale. It is Michael Hale from Aurora, Colorado. Aurora, Colorado. That's right. He's a young man that was probably recruited out this way. I would think so. He's had a heck of a day. Remember, Michael Hale's put pressure on the quarterback four or five times once the interception by Reggie. Now look at this super play by Hale. Inside, outside, look at the brackets. And then just great, great athletic ability saved that man from going from the inside. But look at, the, look at the hustle. Seven, eight guys over there. Don't celebrate too much again, Beavers. <laughs> yeah. Michael Hale, 5'11", 192. I don't know where Aurora, Colorado is. It's pretty close it's by. Denver suburb, I think. So now the Beavers in command by four points with 3.44 to go. David Endress has something for us downstairs. David? Watch for the good hand teams for Oregon State to be out here. Obviously, Wyoming is probably going to try an onside kick here. You get all of Oregon State's players with the best hands right up front. Make sure they cover the football. But there's enough time left that Wyoming's play right here should probably be the deep boot. Oregon State's going to be in a hands team. Right here, the kicker just lays the leather to it, and they try to get good coverage. They should run right by the cover. But you have to play it for the squib, or excuse me, for the onside. That's the right call. Away. That's the right call. Now get Douglas up there. at the four. Flips, down he goes to the 14. And falling on top is Chuck Paulson. So the Beavers now have three minutes and 40 seconds to eat up, and they have a W. Well, the Beavers got to have a drive. Right now, they don't want to give the ball up, and this is the, the testimony of a good offensive team. If this team is going to compete this year, they need to be able to take a situation like this and drive it down the field. That took only three plays. On Wyoming's last score. Well, I'm surprised right here that Mike's bringing people in, giving the advantage. Oh, yes. Chad Paulson, tackled by Mark Brook, the backup weak side linebacker, gets out to the 20, or very close to it. Block is running, 325 to play. I would stay out in that split formation that Mike Summers has used all the way down the field the last three series. Keep Wyoming spread apart. Keep running that option. Bringing everybody in, as they did last play, simply turns this into a gap eight defense with nine or ten men up front. Makes it easy on the defense. Cameron Reynolds lunges to about the 24. Corey Talich on the stop, along with Rob Levin. 
2.45 to go. Well, this is the play of the year right now. Short year so far, but the Beavers get a first down here. Big things happen. Third down and a yard. Spread them out. You don't want to use the counter because you'll see tremendous penetration by Wyoming. This is where you just see who the tough guys are. Right up the gut. Shields has the first down. Yes. Ian Shields breaks it at the 40-yard line, and he's caught up to and dropped at about the 38. That was Wade Constance, who has a little more speed than Ian Shields, and caught him up But a fine run by Shields. Well, I got to hand it to Ian. Watch this. No hesitation. It's the double option, and there he is. He knows he's got to have a yard, and there he goes. And I tell you, he's getting a lot of effort and a lot of ability out of... Uh, what you hear of is Ian Shields' speed. Great decision right there. He's one half a young man. Now, one more first down and it's over, Beavers. 36 yards on the run by Ian Shields. Good. Nine carries for 42 yards. He was a minus 17 in the first half. Well, the best thing he's done is just the way he's injured it, engineered it, kept his cool. First down at the 40. John Young has a hole, tracks across the 35. Close to the 33-yard line. He's stopped there by Rob Levin. The clock continues to run down to a minute 40. you, you got to admire the way that the Beavers offense basically went sleepwalk through the first half and then turned it on when they had to. No panic. They looked real good in this second half. Wyoming has one timeout left. It's second down and four for the Beavers at the 34 of Wyoming. Shields has a bit of a hold, but just a little slow getting it up. Tackled there by Kurt Whitehead, 248-pound senior and one of the captains for Wyoming this year. Last time out, Beavers have a, a third and three, so they've got two downs here to get a first and Two downs to get a first down right here. And they've got a minute ten on the clock. Right here in this situation, Mike Summers on the offensive side, his assistants are telling these offensive people that the Beavers have two downs to get a first down. They can run out of here 45 to 50 seconds without the first down, leaving very little time. They just need to execute, no fumbles, drive straight ahead. And an offense like this with this size advantage ought to be able to give that ball right up the middle or Ian Shields taking a quick option, fake the fullback and go up quickly and get this four yards. Well, this one almost over, but next week, a tuppy as the Beavers go to Fresno to meet Fresno State. Fresno State ranked 10th in the preseason poll by Sorts Illustrated this year, and Fresno State, I'm sure, is still smarting, Steve, from that defeat <laughs> in Corvallis last year. Well, they think they can just outscore the Beavers. That's uh, Jim Sweeney's game plan is uh, score a lot of points, and the Beavers sure had a day against them last year. Third down and four for Oregon State with a minute 10 to play, and Wyoming out of timeouts. Cameron Reynolds Ooh. does not get the first down. It Jimmy, he's close. He yeah. may have gotten it with second effort. Well, it depends entirely where they spot it. Looks like they're spotting it back the yard. Well, if we take a look at this, if we do get a I shot of it, got it, you'll see Cameron turn sideways and try to pick up a couple of yards. That's an excellent call. There's that counter that they've lived by all day. Look at Cameron. Look how much he gets after the play's over. After the hit, full two yards. 35 seconds and the clock running. And Beavers, you got to be able to get a first down right here. Fourth and less than a yard, and there's the flag. Well, now, the official back in the back threw the flag, and the timeout had already been called. It had already been called, so he's got to put it back in his pocket. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Boy, I wish, I wish we could see that because the uh, Ian Shields called timeout before the flag came out. Huge play right there. Oh, the clock is stopped with 30 seconds to go. Oregon State. Now, instead of needing less than a yard, the Beavers need six. Well, the, the defense has got to be ready to run on the field. Of course, the clock will stop with a change of possessions. 
Shields on the pit. Get the first down. Chad Paulson at the 20. Chad oh, Paulson yeah. will score, and the Beavers have locked this one up. Chad Paulson on the touchdown. His second of the game. Oh, yes. 36-yard run by Chad Paulson. Nice blocking up front, folks. The people who brought the contain people, the leverage that was achieved. Now Oregon State's going to get another celebrated. That's penalty. a heck of a fourth and one play, isn't it? <laughs> it is. But the Beavers deserve to celebrate here. Only 21 seconds remaining. Oregon State will snap an eight-game losing streak and also break a five-game road losing streak. And come from behind and beat a, a good team at home. They did a lot of things. Boy, they played great defense. What a quarter this is for Oregon State. Sure is. They scored 26 points in this quarter. Well, they... We knew they could do it. They just forgot to come for the first couple well, you, of three I, quarters. I remember last night at dinner, you predicted 28 points for the Beavers. Well, they missed that extra point. I told you, Jimmy. <laughs> but they were supposed to win by 14, so... Well, they didn't miss this one. And Oregon State on top, 27-16 to 16 with 21 seconds remaining in the game. Well, what do you say? They have done the things they had to do to win. That's a sign of a veteran. This may not be an age veteran team, but it's a, a veteran team because these kids have been playing for a couple of years already, most of them. Well, it took a while for Oregon State to get that offense in gear, but when they did, it's been a wonderful fourth quarter. Well... Sometimes, there they are, there are the Beaver fans. Look at this guy. <laughs> Where's Jack Obilovich? Oh, Jack's probably gonna run on the field and do some wild things here, dude. Oh. Uh, he was yelling at all the players this morning, getting everybody pumped up for the game. Well, that's gotta be a happy coach. Oh, yeah. Right there, and I've got a bunch of kids that ought to be real happy, too. Starting the season with a victory, but next week, at Fresno State the following week at Washington State and then the fourth week to open the season at home against Arizona and they're ranked number 12 in the nation last year of course Arizona was tied by Oregon State in Corvallis and the Beavers had a chance to win that a couple of times but settled for a tie well the Beavers have always played well against Arizona and Fresno State for some reason they seem to strap on their helmets even in the bad years of Oregon State's football they have played well against those teams Jim Sweeney hates to play in Corvallis. I don't know what the stigma is, but uh, he didn't have a lot of luck when he was at Washington State there. No, he did not. <laughs> what a great guy. Yes, that, he that's is. A very week. entertaining man. A lot of fun. Here's the kickoff. Prentice Roan waiting into the end zone and touches it down two yards deep. So Wyoming will come out starting at the 20-yard line with 21 seconds on the clock. And the Beavers on top by 11. The uh, press box over here looks like this. Hills, there's nobody here. <laughs> Lights are on, but nobody's home. A lot of the fans have left as well. Well, they didn't expect this. No, indeed they didn't, and certainly the odds makers didn't. From the shotgun. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Brent Tillman. That's the first pass directed his way today. He's a sophomore from Pueblo, California, who was out last year. Missed eight, no, ten games last year with a separated shoulder. So that stops the clock with 16 seconds to go. The Beaver fans are going crazy down there. Look at them. <laughs> A lot of time for Hughes. Intercepted, Intercepted oh. was the inbounds? No, he was not. That was Paul Montgomery, the backup free safety, senior from Carson, California. But he was out of bounds on the pick. Give me that interception. I worked too hard for that. Eight seconds on the clock. Nice start to a season. Great start indeed. It's nice for Oregon State to win one and at least one side of the football not, not play lights out. Defensively, they sure did. Third down. It's that two-man line Oregon State's put up there. 
Almost intercepted. Bounces away. At the 30. And that's it. The game is over. And a big season-ending victory, or season-opening victory, for the Oregon State Beavers as they win it 27 to 16. Well, they deserve to win it. They stayed in it. Defense got the offense in it. This is a team game, you know, and, and when the offense is supposed to perform and they, they did not in the first half, Oregon State's defense picked up the slack. Next time it'll turn the other way and the offense will come to the rescue and win it. The offense certainly did in that fourth quarter. Oh, it did, indeed they did. Two touchdowns by Chad Paulson, a scintillating run by J.J. Young. Some fine decisions out there today by Ian Shields. So this is a considerably different team than we saw at the start of last season. No question. A year ago, Oregon State's coaches were just trying to stay in the game. They were just trying to establish a run. This year, you see Ian Shields right there. It's been a long time since these Beavers could bask in some of this. In some ways, it's too bad they aren't winning this at home because it's a heck of a way to start a season. All right, let's go down to the winning coach with David Endress. Bill, he's getting congratulations right now from Oregon State President John Byrne. I'll tell you what, where do we start with this thing, Coach? What a great comeback by that football team of yours. Well, I'm, I'm especially proud of the defense, how hard they played the whole game and uh, keep pressure on an excellent Wyoming offense. I'm really proud of the offense in the second half, and they kept on playing and playing hard and executing, and finally there was things started happening for us. Uh, but I, I think the, the difference in this game was how hard we've worked since fall camp on conditioning. I, I think it really started to show and uh, uh, all during the fourth quarter the condition of our team. I'm, I'm really proud of these, these coaches and these players and how hard they've coached and uh, how hard these youngsters have played. And this is a tremendous victory for us. I know that you said early on before the season got started that there's one thing this team has, and it has heart, it has cohesiveness, and they're not going to quit on you. And, boy, what a great example of that today. Well, it's, it starts off with, with leadership on our team. Our captains, our seniors have done a tremendous job of leading for us. And that's just rippled right on uh, through the, the whole team, Dave. And that's an attitude that I, I've saw since last spring. It's just getting better and better. Now, you look at this football team, you go to Fresno State, but oh, what a difference it makes in 1-0 and rather than 0-1. Oh, yes, it does. You know, when you can win a game, it's just a tremendous boost for your, for your confidence and that hard work and all the things that we're uh, teaching to these young men are paying off for them, and that's a tremendous boost for us. Well, congratulations on today's game. Okay, Excellent job. Gentlemen, back up to you. And we echo those congratulations. We'll be back in a moment. Final score, Beavers 27, Cowboys 16.